Very good. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to RWS Ratchet and Learn World Series 2023. Coming to you live from the world's first Muay Thai stadium right here in the heart of Bangkok, Thailand. I am Aaron Suri Sompan, and joining me is former Muay Thai world champion Antoine Pinto. Always a pleasure to be here alongside with you, Aaron, at this amazing fight night tonight. History will be made. The very first ever female Muay Thai fighter to compete for the Ratchatanen Stadium title. And also, tonight is the 78th birthday of the Ratchatanen Stadium. Of course, what a pleasure to be here in this legendary stadium, Aaron. Absolutely. No better place than to perform Muay Thai than right here at RWS and inside Ratchatanen Stadium. All right, well, of course, a stadium that has been here for over 70 year, 78 years, Aaron. Absolutely. Established in 1945, Rajanur Stadium has stood, has stood as the world's first Muay Thai stadium with 78 years of history. Rajanur Stadium is truly the home and birthplace of the art of eight limbs, the best form of striking in the world. And of course, as we've said before, we have entered a new era. A new era not only for Muay Thai, but a new era for Ratchatanen Stadium. Of course, just like Antoine said, we have entered a new era with RWS, who is now giving opportunities to elite fighters to compete at the home of Muay Thai, Ratchatanen Stadium. It is also the home to the greatest Muay Thai tournament and has brought back prestige to the Ratchatanen Stadium belt. Every week, that belt will be defended and fought for right here on RWS. Yeah, and of course, tonight we'll get a chance to see two Rajaranen Stadium on the line. And like I just said earlier, for the very first time in history, one female Rajaranen title alongside with a lot of great fights. So let's have a look at the fight card. In the first prelim of the evening, Nong Pak Boon, Krua Taksin, Tawana from Thailand will be taking on Nong Pan Pha, family Muay Thai, also from Thailand. In the second prelim, Rayuya Iwe Sports Gym, the first of three fighters from Japan tonight, will be taking on Javad Mozafari from Iran. And the last and third prelim of the night from Japan, uh, Shimon Ewa Sport Gym tonight. He will be taken on from Japan, from Thailand, sorry, Wachalapun Sigmawin. And moving on to the very first bout in the main card tonight, ranked number four from Thailand. We have Shadow Sigma win tonight. He will be taken on from Thailand as well and ranked number eight, Satanfa Sitsong Pinong. And then moving on to the second bout in the main card, the number one ranked Tanan Chai Sitsong Pinong returns to RWS, taking on Ma Wen Huli Venomoy Thai. And then in the co-main event, the interim Rajdamnon Stadium Super Flyweight title bout. One of the pound-for-pound -pound greats of the sport, Nataka Iwe Sports Gym, will be taking on Chusap So Salachi from Thailand. And the main event of the evening history will be made. Ranked number one from Thailand, Somrasami Manop Muay Thai Gym from Thailand will be taken on from Turkey, Sefki Vinam Muay Thai for the Ratchatanen title. And of course, the last bout of the evening, ranked number one, Lamna Munlik. Oh, actually, yeah, tonight he will be taken on Saw AC, Saw Tit Sanong Chan. All right, so let's start the night with the very first fight of tonight. Please, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, welcome our fighters uh, from Thailand, Nong Pak Bung. Kua Taksin Tawana and her opponent, please uh, welcome Nong Panfa Family Muay Thai. And here comes the very first fighter of the night, born in Suratani, Thailand. Here she is, Nong Pak Bung. One, two, three, let's go. I see you staring, but don't want no smoke. I hear you talking, but I'm here for the show. Don't get it and twisted, baby. I her opponents so and making a way to the room. Born in Chonburi, Thailand. I hear you talking, but I'm here for the show. Don't get it twisted, baby. I 
This is not my fault. Family is where it's from. And I'm feeling like Rocky. See, I'm trying to check my moves like too sloppy. I hung up on my grim, them niggas be stalking. How she making moves like that, them streets call me. How she take a L and bounce back, they try to cross me. How she come through with the team and get it popped. And out here catching plays, they still trying to catch the wave. Yeah, they trying to catch the wave. take for the very first prelim of the evening here tonight in the red corner we have Nong Pak Boon now Nong Pak Boon just 18 years of age making a debut here tonight she stands at 162 centimeters she weighed in yesterday at 104 pounds and has a reach of 161 centimeters she was born in Suratani in the south of Thailand she has a professional record of 15 fights 12 victories with three losses. In the blue corner, we have Nong Pan Fa. Also from Thailand, she is 18 years of age. She stands at 158 centimeters, so giving away five centimeters in height to Nong Pak Boon. She weighed in yesterday under the limit, 103.4 pounds, and has a reach of 160 centimeters. She was born in Chonburi in Thailand. She has a lot more experience than her opponent. She has 61 victories and 12 losses with three draws. And like I said, she has competed here on RWS previously. She defeated Petumpu back in October time. So you can see, or you might be able to hear Mr. Beer, the voice of RWS, just explaining to the crowd, the white group, come before every traditional bout in honor of the fighters' masters, the gym or the camp they fight out of and represent. Of course, it can be different for both females and males. They like to put their own individual spin on the routine. So you've seen throughout the weeks here on RWS, some beautiful white crews being performed. And it's always interesting to see, of course, when the Japanese fighters take to the ring as well. And of course, tonight, we have got three Japanese fighters here tonight. So I'm excited to see how they perform the Y crew. Of course, we've got two of those fighters performing the Y crew, or Japanese, in the prelim bouts, both the second and third bout this evening. We'll have two very, very good Japanese fighters here tonight. Actually, uh, they to see, just as I was about to say, there's a bit of a section there for Nong Pan Fa. She has a fan club here tonight supporting, which is nice to see, of course. But yeah, I think it's fitting that we're having two female fighters start tonight, which of course leads all the way up to the main event. History will be made later here tonight. The very first female Rajadamno Stadium champion will be crowned. It will be Thailand taking on Turkey. The number one ranked Som Ratsami Manopjim. The 2022 RWS tournament champion at 112 pounds. The RWS tournament champion this year, 2023, at 118 pounds, will be taking on. Zevgi Dogen. Now Zevgi was undefeated until the semi-finals of the tournament, in which he did lose out to Naufrajan. But she is ranked number two. So it will be an amazing main event. Number one versus number two for that female crown. But in the meantime, we're gonna open things up here with our first prelim of the evening. Nong Pak Boon taking on Nong Pan Fa for the first time this evening with the introductions, the voice of RWS, Mr. Beer.
สวัสดีครับ Greetings ladies and gentlemen and Merry Christmas My name is b e a r the voice of Russia the Nerd and welcome to RWS Russia the Nerd World Series We are live from the birthplace of Muay Thai Russia the Nerd Stadium watching live to over 200 countries around the world on the zone Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to start the first preliminary fight of the evening. Are you ready? <laughs> This is Muay Thai. This is r a j a n a m d e r Introducing our referee on stage, Mr. Parin h a n t a n a b o o n And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting o u t the red corner, 18 years of age. She's d i a m o n d and 62 centimeters tall, and very much and four pounds. She holds record of 12 wins and three losses, representing Suratani Province, Thailand. The t u r i t b o Nong Pakbung, k r u a t a k s i n the one. Fighting o t the blue corner, 18 years of age. She s t a n d a n d 58 centimeters tall and weighing in 103.4 pounds. She for a record of 61 wins, 12 losses, and three draw. Representing c h o n b u r i Province, Thailand, the t u r i t b o n o n p a n p o r Family m o i t a All right, here we go. First bout of this evening's very special RWS. Seat to the midsection there by Nong Pak Boon. Nong Pak Pan Pa. Happy to meet her though in the middle of that ring as she chased her down. Remember, she's already got a win here at RWS at Rajat a m n e r Stadium. Good left hand there. As the aggressive Nong Pak Boom pushes forward, a lot of fans here tonight as well. Ooh, whoa! Whoa! Wow! Careful! Wow! He's going to get a warning from the ref. That could have been lethal. Absolutely. Good right kick to the midsection there by Nong Pak Boom, but a good left hand in the y by Nong Pak Boom, and again with that left hand, and again with that left hand, and down goes Nong Pak Boom. Beautiful display of punching power there by Nong Pan Pha. She's back to her feet. You would have to think that Nong Pan Pha is going to go in for the kill. This is a smart move here by Nong Pak Boom, just to hold on for the time being, momentarily anyway, just to regain her focus. But again, she wants it for that left hand. Another beautiful left hand, and now elbows. Unbelievable here by Nong Pan Pha, distributing. Amazing punishment, and down she goes, and it's all over. A first round knockout. Stunning Muay Thai by Nong Pan Pha. Started with the left hand, she finished it with the left elbows. Nong Pak b o o could just not take the power from Nong Pan Pha. Two fights now on RWS and two victories for Nong Pan Pha. Sensational start to RWS this evening, showing exactly why we are having a female title fight for the very first time in our main event. Amazing victory by an amazing fighter! Congratulations to Nong Pan Pha. Let's have a look at how she did it. There, starting with that left hand. Beautiful time, beautiful place, and then at the end, chasing her opponent around the ring. And that you cannot turn your back. Because once you come back, look at that left elbow on the chin, flooring her opponent and getting the first round, round victory here on RWS. Let's get the official confirmation of the decision by. Our MC in the ring, Mr. Beer. Bang!
Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute and 18 seconds of the first round, we have a winner by way of No Good Blue Corner, number four, family. Back to our WS, and what an incredible way to start the night, Aaron. Absolutely, what a knockout that was by Nong Pan Phan. And I have to say as well, nothing says Christmas more like people drinking and dancing terribly. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. And it's always great, and it's always a pleasure to see Rajaman Sen and be filled up by fans like tonight. All right, now let's move on to the second fight of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the fighters from Japan, Ryuya Ewa Sport Gym, and his opponent from Iran. Please welcome Jabad Mozofari. This is the very first Japanese fighter of the night coming out with the Samurai, samurai Slide. Here he is. Welcome to Yuya Eva Sport Gym. Here comes his opponent, Javad Mosafari. We say week in, week out that we have seen some great Iranian fighters this year here on RWS. It's Javad Mosafari. Gonna add himself to that list. Well, let's find out in our second prelim of the evening here on RWS. A late replacement. Let's see what he can do. Javad Mosafari. the tape for the second of three prelims this evening on RWS. Into the red corner, we have got Rayuya Okowaki, or as he's known, Rayuya Ewe Sports Gym from Japan. Weighed in at 100, or oh, this fight should be taking place at 114 pounds. Rayuya from Japan, 23 years of age, and he stands at 163 centimeters. He was born in Yokohama, has a professional record of 34 victories with just seven losses and two draws. And that is from 43 fights. Very impressive record indeed for Rayuya. In the blue corner, we have got Javad Mozofari from Iran. 23 also, just like Rayuya, stands at 165 centimeters, so a little bit taller by two centimeters. He weighed in yesterday at 113.6 pounds. As I said, Rayuya actually fights at 112 pounds. He's one of the best fighters in the world in that weight category. Unfortunately for him, his opponent did pull out. So we give thanks to Javad Mozafari, and of course, it then went up in weight at 114 pounds due to time constraints. He has a reach of 165 centimeters, so again, similar to Rayuya. He is from Yazad in Iran. He has a professional record of 18 victories and seven losses from 25 fights. He's actually fought five times in 2023, and he's actually fought once before here at Rajad Amnern. Stay with me, you can see some Japanese fans here supporting their fighters. Of course, we've got three fighters from Japan here tonight. Of course, the main event will be, oh, sorry, should I say the co-main event, one of the pound-for-pound greats in the world, Nadaka returns to RWS, trying to go for his third Rajdam Nun Stadium belt. He's already a champion, or was a champion at 105 pounds inside this stadium. He's the current 112 pound stadium champion. He's now decided to go up in weight, and he's gonna look to at the 115 pound title. 
course. It will be the interim because we know that Prow Prow is the current champion at 115 pounds, but since he's already got fights booked up, it's been deemed appropriate for that interim belt to be put on the line. And it will be Nadaka taking on a fighter who he lost to in 2016. The number 10 rank Trusab saw Salachi. It's going to be an interesting co-main event. And of course, it all leads up to that history-making main event here tonight. Som Ratsami taking on Zevki Dogen for the first time in the history of this stadium tonight. The last event of 2023, we will finally crown a female Rajada Mern Stadium champion. History live on the zone to 200 plus countries and territories. So Rayuya, his 2023 record is three wins, one loss, one draw. Let's have a look at this wide crew that has been performed. Not good enough with the first arrow. <laughs> Doing all up with number two. And the samurai comes. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. I feel like the Japanese really embrace the white crew. Oh, absolutely. Love it. Always great to see them perform here in Ratchamland Stadium. Yeah, so Ryu in good form in his last 10 fights. He's won eight of them. And he's actually coming off a loss to Deppi Chai here in RWS. So I'm sure he's looking to amend that. Let's find if he can with your directions, Mr. Beer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the second pre-eliminated fight of the evening. This is Muay Thai. This is Ratchet of Dan. Introducing our referee on stage, Mr. Parabe Tukdi. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting about the Red Connor, 23 years of age. He's down at 163 centimeters tall and weighed at 11.8 pounds. He already got up 34 wins, 7 losses, and 2 draw. Fighting over Yokohama, Japan. Let's hear it for Real Young Ever Sports Gym. And his opponent fighting about the blue corner, 23 years of age. His stamina and 65 centimeters tall and weighing in 113.6 pounds. He already got up 18 wins and seven losses. Representing Iran, let's hear it for Java Mosafari. Right, here we go. Second prelim of three scheduled. And here we have a new Ringo Misuki here in RWS from Japan, an idol in Japan. is giving us the honor to be here tonight. Bit of a Japanese theme running through this week's RWS. I wonder why that is. Hmm. All right, <laughs> round one, here we go. And said Ringo giving away two pounds. Big disadvantage for these uh, small weight classes. But again, like you said, Jarad coming in late as a late re replacement. This is going to be very interesting. Yeah, no easy task to fight Ryuya on a full... Oh! oh! Fainting to go low. Surprise me by going up high. Yeah, absolutely. So quick, you got to give credit to Jarad for taking that one. What a start to this round. Back to the center of the ring they go, Ryuya just moving around. He's already targeted that lead left leg of Javad. Javad also looking very relaxed. Mm. They're a beautiful one too. Yeah, you can already see red markings, which is not a good sign after just one minute of the fight. The left side of the leg is Ryuya looks to throw a left hook. Very exciting fight, fighter indeed. Ryuya in the middle of the ring. Taking his time, trying to find his rhythm and distance. Again, you've mentioned it, we've seen it before. Fighters from Iran, very good technically, oh. technically. Good one to again. Ooh, oh, and the low kick. It's hurting him. It's definitely hurting him. Yeah, I was gonna say it was well blocked, but it still seemed like it was hurting. 
Kavad being backed up into the corner now. Oh, oh what beautiful again. combination going upstairs, then to the body, then follows it up with that low kick. Right oh. high kick there from Rayuya. Almost toying with Javad. Back to the leg. Like fast. A lot of output here by Rayuya. Again, going back to that leg. And it really is red raw. Oh, look at that. Oh, good right hand there from Javad. Oh, he spotted it. Big issue here for the Iranian. Can't be many more leg kicks being thrown. Ah, oh, you can see the grimace. Oh, yeah. I think it was a little bit of an unintentional low blow there. Ryuya with those low kicks again and again and again. How many more can Java take? Yeah. Good question. Three or four maybe, clean, before Ooh. he goes down. Left hook there from Ryuya. He wants to go back to the leg. Clear pathway to victory now for the Japanese fighter. 20 seconds left now in round number one. Just about hanging oh. on here for Javad. Yeah, the, the game plan is clear and simple. Destroy the leg of the Iranian fighter. Oh. Ooh, big elbow attempt there. Oh, there oh. it is. Again. Almost perfect timing from the Japanese fighter. Landing over and over and over. Oh, the head kick now! Followed up with the right hook as well to end the round. And what a round for that man. Ryuyo Okowaki doing the business here at RWS. And now you can see Pac Horn sporting a big bushy haircut. <laughs> really embraced Japanese culture since moving there and training some fantastic Japanese fighters. Let's have a look at the highlights. Oh. You can see Jabba was trying to move out the way and distance himself from a low kick. But instead, Ryuya, high IQ, throwing a beautiful right high kick. Jabba there with a one-two combination, but that was the story of the round. The right high, sorry, the right low kick from Ryuya in round number one. Oh, oh. look at this. And you can Ooh. see him dropping his hand, trying to catch the low kick. Took you well. Absolutely. Like a Ladies and gentlemen, in the first round, all three judges score red 10, blue 9. Go on and win the fight. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd like to see Javad switch up the pace, maybe going forward, because going, <laughs> fighting on the back foot and fighting backwards against somebody that's attempting to destroy your leg is not a great solution. Well, here you can see switching stance now fighting in Southpaw. Perhaps the key to control the fight, let's find out. Now before his last defeat against Deputai in October time, the 28th of October here on RWS, Ryuya was 15 fights undefeated, dating back to the beginning of 2020. He was on a good streak. And there you have it. Ooh. Javad now going all out to try and find that one big shot. But this is where he doesn't want to be. Oh. Back into the corner. Yeah, absolutely. Even though he is uh, switching stance now, and try to avoid that low kick on his left leg. But look oh. at Bayuya still pushing forward, aiming for that leg. I remember his fellow compatriot, I think it was uh, Nadakar taking on JJ, became viral on social media. The state of JJ's leg from the punishment that Nadakar was dishing out within that fight. Oh! oh. It's tough though, you have to give yeah, he is, absolutely, but right now it's not a matter of surviving, but it's a matter of trying to win. He is losing the first round, he needs uh, to win uh, this round. Going backwards definitely isn't the way to get the win in the second round. Ryuya still aiming for that leg and the big low kick again. Every time he throws that leg kick, he seems to find it. Jabba is not blocking it. Oh, spinning back, kick attempted there. Ooh. Good low kick of... Java looks He's turning purple. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's welts. It looks it's an very absolute mess. That's what it is. It looks not just painful, but it's already swollen as yeah. well. There it oh, is. Look oh. Oh, 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 look at that. Great shot. Great camera shot as well. Yeah, right on the money there once again. Ryu, yeah. See now, Ryu, yeah, backing him up into the corner, looking to. Dig a left shot into the body. Yeah, you can see the discipline oh. from Raguya. 
see the way that Jabad got back to his feet as well. Very gingerly. It's not easy when you're only oh. essentially on one leg. He's trying to fight back with that left and right hand combination. Again, credit to Jabad. Oh, ho, ho. how many more can he take? His leg is turning into something else right now. It's as red as Santa Claus outfit. Oh, and again, how is he still standing? Digging in a shot to the body that hurt him. Oh, oh again, going hatchet. upstairs. Royuya bringing out all the facets of his arsenal right now as he swings. All right, low kick. Java did well oh, to move out of the way. Leg, Aaron. Say that the line of the shots actually matches the uh, the leg going down there. It's a nice stripe. Another round in the back. You would have to think for Rayuya of Kowaki here on RWS. Another fine display of Muay Thai by that young man. Rayuya fighting an almost perfect fight right now. Let's have a look at the highlights. Of course, Rayuya targeting that leg. That compromised left leg, good left hook, right hand combination there by Javad. Yeah, again, I've said it. I don't believe that going backwards is the way when somebody's trying to attack your leg. We saw Javad trying to switch up stands, but in the end, we are still finding a target for that leg. Oh, look at the hand. Connected with his shin, stay with it. Ladies and gentlemen, in the second round, all three judges score red 10, blue 9. And for the total score, all three judges score red 20, blue 18. All right, let's uh, find out what will happen in round number three. Rayuya, two rounds up to the good here. Javad is still standing. I'm not sure how, to be honest. He's given everything in this fight. Remember, he was a late replacement. You have to give him credit for that, for showing up. Taking it to, or trying to take it to, Rayuya, someone as good as him. All right, here we go. Again, this is the surviving task right now for Jawad. Rayuya surely will be looking to end the fight. You see that combination straight away. One, two. It doesn't matter if Jawad covers up or not, because that third piece is that right Ooh. kick to the leg. Not sure what yeah. Rayuya was trying there. <laughs> Still all over Jabba. Oh. Yeah, and another vicious low kick there. And here's the thing, you know it's coming, and yet... Oh. Stepping knee, left hook to the body. Oof. Another right knee there within the clinch by Rayuya. Jabba. Oh, and again with that low kick. You'd have to think at this point for Jabba to make it to the end of the round to the end of the fight is almost a victory in itself. Yeah, he showed incredible toughness. Not just to end the fight, but staying on his leg as well, that compromised leg. Yeah, and Ryuya asking for a fight as well. Oh, Don't just try either. to survive. Second of the round by Ryuya to that body of Javad. It wouldn't surprise me if the referee just takes a little bit of pity here on Javad, but I'm sure at the same time, Javad would like to finish the fight. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, but again, it's sad to see Jabat not being able to adapt or find a way. Well, easier said than done with Ryuya. Oh, beautiful right left hand combination by Ryuya. Stepping elbow attempted. Jabat covers oh. up. But again, he eats another leg kick. How many as he ate this fight? Oh, once again. And with the pain it might be right now, I can't imagine how it's going to be tomorrow for Jabat. One minute left of the fight before we move on to our third prelim, third and final prelim. Another Japanese fighter will be taking to the ring. Left hook to the body there. Oof. Right low kick once again by Ryuya. Oh. oh! Flushing an elbow through that guard. Oh. Follows up with another right kick. Oh! oh. Ryuya just toying with him right now. Left knee to the body. It's almost like he's playing on the back. Going for his repertoire. Oh. Finally, oh. Javad limps. Left knee to the body. Oh, yeah. you, I'm sure would like to end this fight. Yeah. And the referee's decided go. that's enough. There we go. 
I mean, to be fair, he could have done that a minute earlier. Yeah, absolutely. But amazing job from the ref for protecting the fighter after taking so many shots and it seemed like there was no way out for him and no way to actually turn the fight around. So I feel like he gave him more than enough time. In the end, when he saw the fact that he was limping, I'm not sure how he wasn't limping in round number two, but limping then, he decided just to step in, do the right thing and stop this fight. But you have to give credit to Ryuya. What a way to finish his 2023. Let's have a look at how he did it. Oh. Yeah, that was the, the, the attempt we didn't understand. But here you go, the big low kicks, which was the story of the fight pretty much. Another fight here on this week's RWS and another stoppage. Let's get the official confirmation of the result from our MC in the ring, Mr. Beer. Spectacular Ryuya performance here on RWS. Ladies and gentlemen, of the two minutes and 51 seconds of the third round, we have a winner by way of technical no good right corner. We are going to sport jam. Back to RWS. Aaron, love is in the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no mistletoe to be seen as well. Well done to everyone. But you have to say, getting back to the fights, an amazing display by Ryuya. And in fact, he turned that leg into a big lip. Yeah, no, absolutely. That was, that was a very, very scary leg there. And what an amazing performance once again from the Japanese fighter. Yeah, at 112 pounds. Next year in 2024, the way that he's progressing, the way that he's performing, it wouldn't surprise me to see him competing, maybe for that Rajla Nern Stadium title at one point. Yeah, we'll have to see. And hopefully, we'll get to see him again here in RWS. All right, let's move on to the next fight of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please uh, welcome the fighters from Japan, uh, Simon Eva Sport Gym and his opponent from uh, Thailand. Please uh, welcome Wachara Hon Sing Ma Wei. And here comes the second Japanese fighter of the night, born in Yokohama, Japan. Top fight. Big challenge tonight for the 19 years old. This is Simone Eva Sport Gym. And here comes his opponent, a fighter that is no stranger to RWS. Watch out upon Sing Hua Win. He's back at RWS, competing two times before. His first fight was one of the fights of the year here at RWS against, against Nawa Edge. Then again, in his second fight, he had a great fight. Looking forward to seeing these two in action. In the blue corner, watch out upon Sing Ma Win. of the take for the third and final prelim bout on this evening's RWS. In the red corner, we have got Shimon, Airway Sports Gym, just 19 years of age, 178 centimeters tall. He weighed in yesterday under the limit 
of 129.9 pounds. Of course, super featherweight is 130 pounds. He has a reach of 177 centimeters, and he was born in Yokohama in Japan. He has a professional record of 15 fights, 14 victories with just one loss. The current Thailand super featherweight champion, a WMC Japan champion, and also a WPMF international champion. In the blue corner, we have got Wacharapon Singh Ma Win from Thailand, 21 years of age, stands also at 178 centimeters. He weighed in yesterday also under the limit of 129.7 pounds and has a reach of 174.5 centimeters. So, uh, Shimon with a slight edge in terms of reach. Wacharapon was born in Songkla in the south of Thailand. He also has an impressive record, 64 fights to his name with 61 victories. And they can see that beautiful sweeping camp of RWS here at Rajnamnon Stadium, a full house to end the year. Wacharapon, former Omnoy Stadium champion, a Thailand super featherweight title contender. And he's also got experience in three round fights. In fact, should be noted, that Shimon, he won that Thailand championship against who? Against Wacharapon earlier this year. In fact, Wacharapon in 2023 has got eight fights to his name. Seven wins with just one loss. And that one loss is against that man right there, Shimon. A rematch. The first fight was in August, the 14th of August. Like I said, Wacharapon 2-0 here on RWS. A comeback, exceptional comeback victory against Nawa Ek. Well, there you go, Shimon. Deciding to use a gun. The Japanese really love the white crew. It's great to see. Really taken to it. So, Shimon, 2023 record is 4 and 1, his only loss. Coming against Ritanoi, oh sorry, Parahat Noi. And that was 135 pounds, so he went five, he went up five pounds to take that fight. But all his other fights at 130 pounds were victories, including two knockouts. With the introductions once again, Mr. Beer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the third preliminary fight of the evening. This is Muay Thai. This is Rajadamdan. Introducing our referee on stage, Mr. Tirasin Sira Ratsakun. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting our direct hunter, 19 years of age. His stand of 178 centimeters tall and weighed in 129.9 pounds. He will record 14 wins and one loss. He is the WPMF International Champion, the WMC Japan Champion, and Thailand Super Featherweight Champion, fighting our Yokohama Japan. Let's hear it for G1 Eva Sports. His opponent fighting about the blue corner, 21 years of age. His stand 178 centimeters tall and weighing 129 129.7 pounds. He will record up 61 wins, two losses, and one draw. He is a former Omnoy Stadium champion, representing Songkla Province, Thailand. Let's hear it for Watch It Up on St. Marvin! Third and final prelim, and a rematch from August. Japan versus Thailand. Mazuki getting us underway. Round one of a schedule three. Here we go. Shimon and Wacharapon. Happy to stand in the center of the ring there. Left jabs coming in by the 19-year-old Shimon. Good right hand over the top of the guard of Wacharapon. 
started slow in his last two fights here on RWS. The fight against now I think he was dropped in one of the rounds. Again, Ooh. Shimon easily targeting Wacharapon right now with oh, big good knee there. Yeah, massive knee. Because in our first fight on the main card, we've got Shadow Sigma win, same gym as Wacharapon competing here tonight. He looks for elbows within the clinch. Ooh, no kick attempt. Of course, we've already seen Ryuya from the same gym as Shimon compete and fight here. Later, we will see Nadakar as well. Good left knees there by Wacharapon. What Use of the hands. What an incredible card tonight. As you said, this fight could be part of the main card, but because the card of tonight is so stacked that these two champions have, have to be Ooh. one of the feelings. Good low kick there by Shimonu again. Wobbled Wacharapon again, using that height to his advantage. Good step in knees here by the Japanese fighter. Yeah, without a doubt, another RWS card. This could have been co-made. Yeah, you know? Absolutely. It's a rematch, and of course, but two very, very good fighters. Ooh. At a very high level at 130 pounds. Two of the best 130 pounders in the world. Of course, that bit belt is still vacant here at Rajnamdan Stadium. Mm. Hope to create a champion in 2024. Oh, very interesting, and it's great to see pure Muay Thai action here in the clinch. Oh, there's a oh, cut! Oh, there is! Right eye it's of spots. Shimon! There's blood flowing down the face of the Japanese fighter. And you, you, I've got to say, the game plan of Wachalapon oh, getting in the clinch! And again using those elbow. elbows! His left eye might be cut now! Oh, my oh. goodness! Bad place! Looks like there's blood that's going to go into the eye of Shimon. Oh, and a big knee! Look at the hand positioning from Wachalapon. Yeah. Great position Beautiful. there! Beautiful there by Wacharapon. Look at how close Wachapon stays to his opponent to get in a clinch right away. Big knees, three times in a row, force. Oh, and a big elbow again. The game plan is clear. Get in a clinch and use those knees. Once again with that left knee to the body. This is good work by Wacharapon. Early on in the round, Shimon though was doing well. He wants to fire an elbow back. It's been a great round of Muay Thai action. Difficult, not an easy one to score, but you might think that cut might have just Good it for Wacharapon. We'll find out very soon as we end the round. Wow, Ooh. big round here. Yeah, and both fighters going back to the corners. They seem relatively happy, but you can't be happy oh, with the mouth. Damage. Yeah, damage on the nose and, of course, the eye oh. of Shimon. Yeah, let me tell you, a lot of people thought that was going to be an easy fight for Shimon. But look at this. Perfect game plan from oh. Wacharapon. That might be where the cut was created. Oh, and this big elbow as well from the right side. Oh, that might have been a one. Not sure. Looked like it was just a glass. I don't think that would have done it. That might have, though. Good stepping knees from Wacharapon. And within that clinch. Oh, that's just a beauty of my time. Ladies and gentlemen, in the first round of the judges, starting on Blue Jay. The Vaseline's going to fly, yeah, and then the blood might start flowing again, and then he's at risk of doing permanent damage. So, like I said, I feel like the referee's going to play a big part in this second round. All right, let's find out. Low kick there by Shimon. Yeah, Shimon, it's going to be interesting to see what's the game plan. You already know, watch a lot from pushing forward right oh, away. I saw a left hand there fly in. Onto that eye by Wacharapon. Oh. He's even in the clinch as well. He's almost smothering the, the face of Shimon, getting rid of that Vaseline in the process. Oh. Shimon happy to close the distance so that Wacharapon can't connect with any more knees. Because we, there's also blood flowing from the nose, so it could be very difficult for him to breathe. Oh, oh and a big knee again. again. This is definitely going to bother him. But watch out for looking very strong today in the clinch. Yeah, I don't know if this was the game plan by the team at Sigma Win for mm. Wacharapon to clinch up. But if it was, it's, a, it's worked well so far. Yeah, absolutely. Well, 
on the outside. Most people expect oh. that Shimon to do better, so probably part of the game plan for Wachalopon to get closed with those vicious elbows. Now Shimon trying to work in the clinch. No clear damage. The ref is going to step it up. Oh, nice right hand to the body. He needs more of that. Good stepping knee by Shimon. You see Wachalopon again looking to utilize those knees yeah, within look the at clinch. That hand positioning there in the clinch. Trying oh. to push the hand. And again, another lethal left elbow there to Wacharapon. What a display of skills there in oh, the clinch. Right high knee. You can see how Wacharapon uses his second hand to push. Ooh. Left hook, right knee there by Shimon. Oh, and another left elbow attempt that might have just connected by Wacharapon. Oh, and back. again, within that clinch. I can't believe the referee's not going to ask the daughter to take a look. Yeah, Shimon trying to fight back in the clinch with the knees. But those elbows. Oh, big knee there from the Japanese fighter. You see, he's looking for that left elbow every time they get into the clinch. He is, but he also needs to be careful. You don't want to let this round be taken away from not working enough. But oh, look at the damage on the face of the Japanese fighter. Swinging right hook there by Shimon. Oh. I'm not sure it's smart for him to continue to go in or be happy to go in the clinch with Wacharapon. Yeah, you're yeah, absolutely right. Stand on the outside. Oh, oh the right big right hand there from the Japanese fighter. And again, goes into the clinch, which favors Wacharapon. But yeah, a huge right hand there by Shimon. And he needs more of that. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh and again! Look, Wacharapon is susceptible to right hands. We've seen that in previous fights. Shimon giving everything he's got wow. as we end round number two here on RWS. And what a round of action we've just witnessed. Shimon wow. compromised within the clinch, eating a lot of knees and a lot of elbows. And at the end of that round, two massive right hands applying yeah. pressure to Wacharapon. Yeah, and not allowing wondering him to his own way. If you're wondering why is the game plan of Wacharapon going into the clinch, now you know why, because the power from the, the hands of the Japanese fighters is just vicious. There, there! Oh. Massive right hand of balancing Wacharapon. Sneaky left, right knee combination by Shimon. Oh. Those elbows. Within the clinch, Vicious. within the clinch, those elbows are lethal there. Another shot of that stunning right hand by Wacharapon. Ladies and gentlemen, in the second round, all three judges score red 10, blue 9. So the total score is 19 to 19, even. So next round will be the judgment round. Win the round and win the fight. Well, how about that? Those two big right hands from Shimon knocking back where Charapon has given him a big lifeline. Won the round, which means it is now a judgment round. And as Mr. Beer says, win the round, win the fight. Again, yeah, with Charapon in a close battle, a close war here on RWS. And again, Pacon trying to apply some Vaseline to that nasty cut. But Shimon fighting like a warrior as we know he is. Well, Shimon needs to stay on the outside though. We've seen yes. the power he possessed with those hands. But watch out upon happy to fight on the back, back foot now. And that's Beautiful why he wants to fight on the back foot. So then Shimon meets him and he can wrap his arms around him and start delivering some knees to the midsection. That's better by Shimon. Right hand, and he doesn't move forward. Left oh. hook there by Shimon. Happy to fight off the back foot and smart of, of him to do that. But again, you can see what Wacharapon is trying to do. He's trying to leverage his arms so then he can fire in a quick elbow strike. Good elbows of his own here by Shimon. But you don't want to get caught into that wall that Wacharapon wants within the clinch. So far, very close, beautiful. 
Shots there. Oh, and look at Simon. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to use speed as well. Shalapon is slowing down a little bit. He is, and you know, all the significant strikes right now in this third round that belong to Shimon. I would say that he's up right now. Well, you're absolutely right. And watch Shalapon fighting on the back foot as well. The whole game plan of pushing forward, oh. getting to the clinch was great, but now beautiful right hand from Shimon again. This is a great display of not only pure Muay Thai, but heart by Shimon. Compromised oh. in round one. A nose that might not be able to breathe out of, and he's got his eyebrow falling off right now, but he's still continuing to push forward and take it to Wacharapon, showing exactly why he is the Thailand champion. Yeah, absolutely. Shimon speeding up more and more as Wacharapon is slowing down a little bit. Still very close halfway through the last round. Tempted elbow there from the clinch by Wacharapon, but Shimon grabs a hold. Final 90 seconds of this fight, and I feel like he's slipping away from Wacharapon. Yeah, you're absolutely right now. Wacharapon looking to push forward. Oh. Beautiful one two there from the Japanese fighter. Superb, beautiful hook strikes by the top, sorry, by the Japanese fighter Shimon. But again, Wacharapon in this position, constantly looking for elbows. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing position in the clinch for Wacharapon. Beautiful oh. right hand again and a knee. But again. And Shimon pushes forward with Wacharapon with those deadly elbows, almost connects. It almost feels like Wacharapon has to pour it on now in this final minute. Otherwise, the, like I said, this fight could be slipping away from the fighter from Thailand. Yeah, absolutely, but somehow the corner of Wacharapon tell him, hey, telling him that he is winning. Ooh. Staying on the back foot, this could be a dangerous decision yes. not to push forward. Well, we'll have to see, of course, still very close. Watch up on doing great in the clinch. Now back in action. Shimon, oh. there's no stopping for this man. The hands of Shimon have been a big difference maker in this third round. Started with the second with those right hands. Good left hook there by Shimon Wacharapon. Saying it didn't hurt, it didn't do anything. He's still scoring though. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And it might be an issue for Wacharapon in the end. Not a fighting. And there it is. The end of the last round. And I'm going to have to say, this is going to be a very close one. I, I personally am going to put my neck on the line. I think that Shimon did enough in round, in, in second, of course, mm. but round three as well. If he won the round number two, then I'm not sure how you can not give him round number three, yeah, the way that he was attacking. You're absolutely right, Aaron. Completely outworking Wachalapon in the last round. Of course, the heavy shots were coming from the Thai fighter, but we'll have to see how they score this one. Oh. oh. Beautiful elbow strikes by Wacharapon throughout the entire fight. But Wacharapon, sorry, Shimon, he did well as well in that clinch. I know that Wacharapon, just like that, Oof. was throwing beautiful elbows in the clinch, but in terms of knee strikes, Shimon did some good work as well. That right hand in the second round. Probably the turning point for Shimon. I think it was a turning point. In fact, like I said, I do think that Shimon should take it, but I'm not a judge and I've been wrong before. Let's see how the Rajnamna Stadium judges have called that third and final round, the judgment round. What a rap way to end the prelims here before we move into our main card. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of Muay Thai action, we go to the judges' scorecard. All three judges score this bout 29 to 28. Declaring your winner by way of you, dirty boys, the Shushan! Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our Thai traditional music band, Rajan of the Beacon Orchestra.
Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the Latin Beatle Orchestra! to RLWS Rotterdam World Series 2023. And wow, what an amazing way to start the night, Aaron. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Three amazing bouts of Muay Thai. Fighters winning by knockouts, and of course, big drama there in the third bout as well, going to a judgment round, showing all the facets of Muay Thai. And of course, the amazing you'll only see here on RWS. And of course, tonight is the 78th birthday of the Rajanaman Stadium and it has bring us a lot of surprises tonight and of course like I said earlier tonight for the very first time in history there will be a female Rajanaman Stadium champion. Now a lot of you who might not be following Muay Thai might be wondering why has it not happened before? Well listen back not long ago only two years ago female fighters were not allowed to fight in major stadiums and only just not allowed to fight but not allowed to even touch the ring as an old belief that that will bring bad luck to other fighters Aaron yeah absolutely and of course last year in August the very first two female fighters took to the ring here on RWS and of course we've kept that tradition going week in week out we see amazing female bouts and it's all led up to tonight. Like Antoine said, the very first female Rajalamna Stadium champion will be crowned here tonight. And of course, the key word of RWS has always been a new era for Muay Thai. Female will be fighting for the very first time in history for a title fight. That is new. But something else that's new for 2024 is that R. WS will be going to Japan. Absolutely amazing to see RWS moving to Japan. And of course, there might be a lot of questions on what's going to happen. So here I am tonight with Mr. Ben Tian Chai, Pisik Wutinan, GSV CEO and RWS President and Board Director of Rajanan Stadium, alongside with Mr. Yoshikatsu Kitahala, CEO of Tokyo Dome Corporation. So of course, Mr. Bang, I need to talk to you first. It has been the key word for the past year and a half, new era. You've made this stadium look amazing and completely new. You've taken Muay Thai to the world for millions of people to see on the zone. Tonight, history will be made with the very first female fighter to be crowned Rajanaman Stadium champion. And now, taking Muay Thai for the very first time in history to Japan. Yes, definitely. Um, I'm super excited. We are super excited. I lost my word, but um, it's an honor for us to take RWS to Japan. It's our honor to be taking the authentic, the pure, and the best art of Muay Thai to the legendary stadium, Koraku En Hall. Uh, Rajam Nguyen Stadium, you know, is the first Muay Thai stadium. This is where the first rules book of Muay Thai was written. And we want to carry on the mission. The first mission for Rajam Nguyen Stadium is to develop and to build Muay Thai and expand Muay Thai to all over the world, to everyone. And we want to escalate and elevate that mission next year by taking Ardaman US, taking the heart and soul and the best actions of Muay Thai to Japan. And we want to do it at the most historical and legendary stadium, Koraku En Hall. And it's my honor, it's our honor to have the Mr. CEO and, and um, Chairman of Tokyo Dome Corporation with us today. 
Yeah, and it's amazing to see how far we've gone with Muay Thai. And of course, Thailand being the land of Muay Thai, but Japan also being the home of martial art. So, Mr. Yoshigatsu, how do you feel that we're gonna get to bring Muay Thai in Japan in some of the biggest stadiums in the world and RWS in Japan for Japanese fighters to see? Uh, Saudi Cup. Saudi Cup. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't have uh, good English. Uh, your English so is great. <laughs> I don't like to speak my Japanese. Uh, I'm very excited to be in the Tokyo Stadium. I'm very excited to be here. I'm very excited to be here. I'm really so excited that um, having this Muay Thai, the Russia Damnon Stadium's Muay Thai, this heat in the stadium to be in Tokyo, Japan. Well, thank you very much. おそらくえ、バンクシーオと、え、私ども東京ドームが一緒になって、このムエタイをこのラジャダウナの熱気を東京に持っていけば、え、また日本でムエタイのブームが再燃して一大ブームを起こせるんじゃないかと。今からそうい
former 147 pounds RWS champion, making his way to the ring, looking to get the win here tonight. Now moving up to 154 pounds, this is Shadow Lima win. Here comes his more than capable opponent, Satan Bass, it's Song B. Nong. A lot of accolades in the sport of Muay Thai. One of the best super welterweights in the world, consistently performing at a high level. Looking to get back into the winning column here against Shadow. This is a great fight at super welterweight. Of course, the champion is Mr. Daniel Rodriguez. One of these fighters potentially could be competing against Daniel somewhere along the line in 2024 for all that time. But in the meantime, he's got to come face to face right here at Heart WS. Welcome, Satan Bar, Sit Song Pino. And here you can see the tail of the tape for your very first fight of the main card in this spectacular RWS. What a way to end the year. Shadow Sing Ma Win from Thailand, just 23 years of age. He stands at 180 centimeters and has a weighed in yesterday at 153.5 pounds, well under the limit, has a reach of 186 centimeters. He was born in Tak in Thailand. He has a professional record of 78 victories, 22 losses and one draw. He was, like Antoine said during the intro, the RWS 2022 welterweight champion. But like I said, that was at welterweight. Since then, he has moved up. He is a former Rajnamnur Stadium champion at that weight. Of course, moved up in weight class. Was in the tournament at 154 pounds this year, but was unable to get out of the group stages, even though all the fights that he fought were very, very close indeed. Just getting used to the weight. In the blue corner, we have got Satan Fa, Sip Song Pinong, also from Thailand. 26 years of age now, stands at 178 centimeters. Weighed in at 153.9 pounds and has a reach of 179 centimeters. So giving away seven centimeters in reach to Shadow. He was born in Songkla in the south of Thailand. He has a professional record of 63 victories with 23 losses and one draw. A former WBC Muay Thai champion at this weight, a former Thai fight champion, a former Isuzu Cup tournament champion. And like I said, he was a participant in last year's welterweight, super welterweight tournament where he come unstuck in the semi-final where he took on the eventual winner of last year's tournament, Mr. Daniel Rodriguez. Big fight at this weight. I do believe that RWS possesses the greatest super welterweights, 154 pounders in the world, in the sport of Muay Thai. And you're witnessing two right now coming to blows, clashing in the very first fight of the night here on RWS. Reza, 2023, has had six fights, four victories with two losses. Two, four of those victories, sorry, two of those four victories he did win by knockout. He defeated Reza, unfortunately he lost to Pet Morocot. He then defeated Burak Poiraz. He then lost to Yogwisha. And then defeated Shakruz from Venomoy Thai via second round TKO. And then in October, the last time that we saw him, he was able to defeat Shahu Gazarian by knockout in round number three. In the 2022 tournament, he defeated Jonathan Betts. He then went on to defeat Munkon Gao. He then drew with then Rajano Stadium champion Sajad. Then in the semi final, he defeated Yorkun Pon. Then in the final, he defeated Sibmun to be crowned the 2022 welterweight champion. Satan Far in 2023 has got three wins and two losses to his name. In RWS, he has a total record of five victories and two losses from seven. Shadow from 11 fights in RWS has got eight wins, 
two losses and one draw. With the introductions, we've got Mr. Beer. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, to our Muay Thai fan all around the world, Merry Christmas! We are now entering the main card. Today we have five bouts on the main card, featuring the interim Russian Man Stadium Super Flyweight title match. And the first time in the history of the stadium, the first Russian Man Stadium female Vandom Wear title match. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to start their first main card of the evening. We are live from the birthplace of Muay Thai to over 200 countries around the world. This is Muay Thai. And this is Roger Dunne! Ladies and gentlemen, this ball is brought to you by Dream Rubicons and Sanwa Jet. And introducing our referee on stage, Mr. Norin Hong Hee Run. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting! I want the red corner, 23 years of age. His stamina and 18 centimeters tall and with it, with it at 23.5 pounds. He, a record of 78 wins, 22 losses and one draw. He is former Russian Emblem Stadium champion and RWS 2022 World of World World Champion representing the province Thailand. Let's hear it for Shadow Sigma Supporting fighting now on the blue corner, 26 years of age. His time at 78 centimeters tall and weighed in at 23.9 pounds. He will record of 63 wins, 23 losses, and one draw. He is Isuzu tournament champion and former BBC Muay Thai Thai fight champion representing Songkla Province, Thailand. Let's hear it for Satan Fah Sit Solpino. All right, here we go. First fight in the main card. What a fight it is. Two studs at Super Welterweight. Shadow Sigma win in the red corner. And of course, we've got Satan Fa Sit Song Pinong in the blue. The first of two Sit Song Pinong fighters here tonight. Shadow starting well, looking for that right hand against Satan Fa. Right away, Shadow pushing forward. We said during the tournament that we still think that he's growing into that frame at Super Welterweight. He looked like a pretty clean welterweight. He didn't look like he had to cut, had to cut much weight, but he just did decide that he wanted to go up. And he thought he's fought some of the absolute best at this weight, and he's looked good against him. Oh! Veteran oh. move there by Satan Far. Referee not having that, though. <laughs> you can see the rankings. Shadow currently ranked number four. And uh, Satan Far, number eight here at Rajnam Nun Stadium. Of course, the champion is Daniel Rodriguez. Ooh, big shots, big trades there. Absolutely. Beautiful big elbow. elbow. Yeah, but tempted by Satan Far. We saw the damage in the third freely, what elbows can cause. Shadow pushing forward. I like what he's doing. We saw it in the past. Shadow taking his time and sometimes going a little bit too slow in the first round, but now you can see. He's adjusted himself to fighting three rounds right away, pushing forward. Still a very close round, though. Oh, beautiful left kick from Satan Fa. Great timing. Oh. Stuck in the corner now, oh. the right elbow again. This is beautiful timing by Satan Fa, it really is. Even though it looks like Shadow is on the attack right now, every time that he throws, he's being counter strike striking by Satan Fa. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see Satan Fa fighting with a little bit of a similar style to. 
his teammate who will be fighting tonight, Tanan Chai, sometimes liking to fight on the back foot and just counter attack. Oh, oh beautiful knee there. There's a good right hand yes. from Chado before that. Yeah, Tanan Chai currently ranked number one in this weight division. Of course, we've also got Yobwisha at this weight class as well. Stacked super welterweight oh. division. It really is here at Rajdan Mill Stadium. Sets it right kick to the body, blocked there, or held on to by Shadow. He's looking for an elbow through the middle there. Good right knee to the body by Satan Fah in reply. Very close round so far. 30 seconds left. Not really sure who's going to get the better of this it. This is the type of fight we see all the time, it seems, by Shadow. Yeah, it absolutely. doesn't matter who he fights. Oh, Ooh. good big right hand. It's always relatively close. He always gives as good as he gets as well. Of course, we've also got Pet Murakot in this division as well. Like I said, oh, Ooh. big right hand. Elbow trying to deliver one back. I think that's Satavar's second big right elbow that's connected to Shadow mm. within this round already. Slight, it's not a cut, but a well opening up here of throwing on the face of Shadow. He goes through the body that time. Nice left oh, kick by Shadow. Shadow. Landing big oh. shots there. Nice right hand by Sasson to end the round. Yeah, but those last few shots from Shadow might turn around in his favor. And we have the great timing from Sasson for a few shots against the power of Shadow. So we'll have to see how the judges are going to score this one. Very close round. Yeah, absolutely. It was a very close one. I I might have to disagree with you. I think that Satan Fah did enough to take the round. I don't know if the judges are going to see it mm. the way I did or not, but I feel like he blocked the majority of Shadow shots and was able to power strike just like that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Either what a display of Muay Thai action here in the first round. Two top level athletes, of course, Ooh. open scoring here in RWS. So we'll get to know who wins the first round. Ladies and gentlemen, in the first round, all three judges are big ten, blue nine. Tough task now for Stefan Fah, losing the first round. Again, very, very close round. Did go in the favor of Shadow. He will probably come out with the same game plan as pushing forward. So let's see how is Stefan Fah going to adjust. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point there, Antoine. I feel like it's up to Stefan Fah now to be more aggressive. You know Shadow's gonna fight as he does, just like this, pushing forward. Oh, good right hand there by Satan Far. He was being more aggressive. Yeah, I like this. And this is something that we don't always see fighting uh, fighters adjusting after the decision of the first round. And this is great to see Satan Far now pushing forward. Oh, oh, big elbow by Shadow. Good left kick to the body. Shadow looks like he's warming up right now. Oh, oh. big sneaky elbow. By Shadow once again to the face. Oh, and look at the strength Fah. there of Shadow. T to the midsection there by Shadow again. Looks for elbow strikes. Big right hand, left knee oh. up the middle by Satan Far. To that rib body of Shadow. Another big knee there by Satan Far. Yeah, and if there, there was a question about Shadow fighting at 154, is he strong enough? Is he powerful enough? Well, he is for sure proving it right now that he is indeed strong and powerful enough to fight at this weight Ooh. class. Satan Fah now looking to get the advantage in the clinch. Yeah, it's tough now for Satan Fah because, oh, big right hand once again there through the guard from Shadow, then tries to deliver a left hook to the body. Oh. Both fighters very strong used to fight in the clinch. But it seemed like it was Satan Fah's game plan. Oh, 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 and down oh. he goes, the body shot of Shadow. How many times have we seen that shot to the body over the weeks here on RWS? And if the head doesn't fall, then you go to the body. And here comes Shadow again. You know what he's going to do? He's going to go back to the body. Or he's oh. not. I was wrong. He's going to the head. Oh, and it's great to see Sushim up and a big elbow from Satan Fah now. Dangerous. Stay to be in for Shadow as he's trying to get the finish. Yeah, one minute left on the clock now. Satan Fah is being peppered to the body and to the head. Shadow relentless trying to stop this fight. Satan Fah just trying to jump in with an elbow that time. Yeah, and he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. Satan Fah has got absolutely nothing to lose oh, now. Oh, another big right hand there. And again. 
And again, a third. And a oh. fourth. Oh, he's sat so far. Still up. More body strikes. Another hook. All shadow in this round. It will, of course, be a 10 8 round due to the knockdown. Oh, oh big elbow. Sat up, not giving up. More body strikes. Satan Far's body is, of course, compromised, but he's holding on here until the end of the second round. Now trying to hold on for a few seconds. Oh, and Shadow still pushing forward like a tank, trying to get the finish. Oh, the elbows, the elbows. Oh. And off round two. What a round for Shadow. You can see a disappointment Satan Far, of course, going back to his corner. Head down. Shadow, more buoyant. What a beautiful hook to the body. At first I thought maybe it was still a liver, but if it was still a liver, of course, that would be it. It was a beautiful body strike. Let's see it by Shadow there. Oh. I think it was the first one that did it. It was a delayed reaction by Saturn Far. What a left elbow that was. Two bulls going head to head in your first fight of this main card, which Talk about how Shimon and Wacharabon could have been a big card fight. This could have been a main event fight. <laughs> Absolutely. The RWS. Never mind the first bout. Yeah, it was the first one you can see. Been going down. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, in the second round, all three judges score it 10, blue, 8. So the total score, all three judges score with 20, blue 17. It is a big ask, but he has got it in his arsenal. One thing that you would say, Shadow, if he chooses to not fight how he did in round number one and round number two, and start moving backwards, that, that might play into the game plan of Satan Far. So let's see how this one plays out here in your third and final round. Well, Shadow now using the push kick, trying to keep Satan Far away from him. Oh, beautiful one-two there. Perhaps we'll get to see a little bit of a boxing style there. Both fighters using their hands as Satan oh. makes a knockout. So the weapon of, cho of choice should be his hands and elbows. Yeah, but you're right. Shadow doing exactly what he needs to do right now. Use that push kick. And when Satan does come too close, then you counter strike. I'm interested to see if Shadow will go back to the body. Unless he feels that he doesn't need to now. It's just about consolidating what you have. Oh, oh, there he goes. But a good right hand, and that's what happens. You drop your hand to go to the body. It leaves your head exposed. Well, Satan Far somehow not really pushing forward anymore. Difficult to find a solution now. Almost looking like he's oh. giving up. Oh, but a good right hand there. Well, one big right hand for these 70 kilogram fighters. And you, it can floor you. Oh, well. Nah, uh, we don't really want to see that, though. We're not exactly sure what happened. Oh, I think there was an intention, non intentional low blow, maybe. I thought they were just, you know, yeah. saying, <laughs> saying that he's enough, enough, yeah, yeah. He's enough Oh, well. Oh. Maybe not enough yet for Satan Far. Beautiful uppercut there. Because the stable mate will be warming up. Tanon Chai, Sit Song Pinong mm. is up next. The 2023 Super Welterweight Tournament Champion will be competing. He was also number one ranked, and you have to feel that maybe potentially next year we will get to see Tanon Chai take on Daniel Rodriguez at some point. You would hope anyway. But Shadow is putting his name in the hat to potentially fight Daniel as well with performances like we're seeing here tonight. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And there's so many fights we want to see with Shadow. Shadow, Pat Malakot, once again, would be an amazing fight. So Shadow, right. Yad Vishar, Shadow, Daniel, the top three, top five would be dream fights to fight against Shadow. And what a performance so far. 50 seconds remaining on the clock and Saturn Fire looking out of solutions right now. Yeah, absolutely right. It's almost like the four horsemen of the super welterweight division, of course. You've got Daniel, the champion, and just behind him, you've got Pet Morricot and Yobuchar. And of course, this man right here claiming the stake in Shadow Sing Ma Win. What a stack division here on RWS at Super Welterweight.
And it's now with the rankings as well, you get to see who is potentially next in line. And that's the whole ethos now on RWS, is to bring prestige back to the, that Ratchnam Earth Stadium belt. And more simplistic for the fans, understanding who is next in line. And you get to see it, those fights, those title fights, week in, week out here, live on the zone. Well, the mother of Shadow here, you've been following RWS for a while now, you know Shadow out of poverty now. I also saw a glimpse of Namsak Noi as well yeah, behind absolutely. him. He's trainer at Sigma Win, the Emperor. He fights with one of the greatest oh. Muay Thai records of all time. Here we can see the handiwork of Shadow. There's the body shot. It shut down. Oh. Sat that far. He tried his best to stay up, but his body just wouldn't allow it. And after he won the first round, the third round, Satafar, of course, needed the knockout. Unable to find it. The growth of shadow continues here at Rajdhapur Stadium on RWS. And you would have to think, like me and Antoine were saying, a potential future contender for the crown. Absolute football great. Congratulations to Shadow. He will get his hand raised here. Let's get the official confirmation of the result from Mr. Beer. Ladies and gentlemen of the three rounds of Muay Thai action, we go to the judges' school card. All three judges score is both 30 to 26. Declaring your winner by way of unanimous decision. Right! Order! Shadow! Sing! What an incredible performance tonight by Shadow Singma Win and showing us why he is in the top four at 154 pounds, Aaron. Absolutely, and when the next rankings get updated, it could be that Shadow is further up the card. And potentially, if we don't get to see that title fight, then the next fighter who's coming out, also from Sit Songpinong, could be his next opponent. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, of course. Coming up next, we got Tanan Chai, who is the latest RWS tournament champion and ranked number one at the Rajaranen 154 ranking. So this is going to be another amazing fight. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the fighters from Tunisia, Marvin Huli. And his opponent from uh, Thailand, please uh, welcome Tanan Chai Sitsong Hanong! Big challenge for him tonight. Fighting the number one ranked in Ratchetman Stadium. And we rise up to the occasion. From Tunisia, this is Marvin Huli. RWS Super Welterweight World Champion Tanachai Sit Song P Nong makes his return to RWS and to Rajadamnern Stadium. What a year it has been for that man right there. Put his name firmly, firmly on the map as one of the very best Super Welterweights in the world. Now looking to finish the year with a bang. Welcome back. Tanachai, Sit Song Pino. And 
and there you can see the tail of the tape for this one. We have Tanan Chai, Sit Song Pi Nong in the red corner from Thailand, 22 years of age, standing at 185 centimeters, weighing in at 154 pounds, the super welterweight limit. He has a reach of 188 centimeters. He's born in Royet in Thailand. He has a professional record of 21 victories, 21 losses and two draws. Number one ranks here at Rajadamnon Stadium at Super Welterweight, the RWS 2023 Super Welterweight Champion, a former Omnoy Stadium Champion, former WBC World Champion and the IFMA, which is the amateur ranks of Muay Thai, also a gold medalist in that tournament as well. In the blue corner, we have got Marwin Huli fighting out of Venom Muay Thai from Tunisia. He is 26 years of age, stands at one centimeter taller than Tanan Chai at 186 centimeters. There can't be many fighters that Tanan Chai has fought against who are taller than him. He weighed in yesterday at 153.8 pounds and has a reach of 188 centimeters, exactly the same as Tanan Chai. He has a professional record of 48 victories with just six losses from 54 fights. Very impressive indeed. He's born in Sfax in Tunisia. Still looking for his first win though on RWS. He did compete earlier this year, unfortunately losing his bout. That was a loss to Julian TFC around six months ago. Let's see what he can do here tonight. So Tanan Chai, during the group stages of the RWS tournament, he finished in the Group A. He was a runner-up on seven points. His first fight in the tournament, he actually lost by split decision to Daniel Rodriguez, which was a very close fight. He then defeated Razor by a knockout, then defeated Pong Jack. And then in the semi-final, defeated Pet Morakot, which was a massive fight. And then he went on to defeat Yodwichar. His RDBS record stands at nine fights with eight victories and one loss. And in 2023, eight fights, seven wins, one loss. And he won the WBC title in two weeks. This is the take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the second main card of RWS Ratchetamdun Series. This is Muay Thai. This is Ratchetamdun. This bout is brought to you by Pumpkin. And introducing our referee on stage, Mr. Satra Supasai. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting. Now of the blue corner, 26 years of age, he's 186 centimeters tall and weighed in at 53.8 pounds. He will record of 48 wins and six losses, representing Tunisia. Let's do it for Marwa Holy Fighting out of the red corner, 22 years of age. He's 185 centimeters tall and weighed him 154 pounds. He for a record of 61 wins, 21 losses, and two draw. He is Ifwa World Championship gold medalist and former Omni Stadium champion. And RWS 2023 Super World World Champion representing Royet Province, Thailand. The Slim Leaper, let's hear it for the Nanchai Sitsong Pino! Second bout of the main card. And the final bout we took before we head into the Rajnanur Stadium title fight. Two tonight, of course, the whole main event sees Nanaka return to rematch Chusab for the super flyweight title belt, the interim title. And in the main event, history will be made as Som Ratsumi takes on Zevki Dogan, the 
first ever female title fight will be in our main event here tonight. Very interesting fight. Believe it or not, for the first time of his career, Tanan Chai will be considered as the favorite in this fight. As he stated, he is always the underdog. He was the underdog in the tournament, he won the tournament, and now for the first time. So true, so true. That, that tournament victory was incredible though. We had to fight Dobachar in the final, Pet Morakot in the semi-final. We had to take on Kong Jack, Reza, and of course Ooh. Daniel Rodriguez as well. I mean, incredible amount of talent. But it's still a very young, of course, long future ahead of him, but already established oh. champion. Connected right high kick there, almost connected Ooh. by Marwin Huli. He's looking in tremendous shape yeah, here tonight. He is. You're right. Don't count him out just yet. Staying close to Tenenchai. Not scared at all, but eating those kicks yes. quite a few times oh. already in the right hand. I'm not sure if that was a hand or an elbow strike there by Tenenchai. But yeah, the left side of Marwin mm. Huli's body is marked up already for those vicious right kicks by Tenenchai. And again, throwing it at will, not blocking. And again, well, Marwin sticks his tongue out, but you have to feel that it's actually starting to hurt him. Yeah, and Tanachai with a style that he usually likes to fight on the back foot, standing in the ropes. Ooh. He likes to counter shot. And this is exactly the perfect style that he wants. But Marwan on the other side, he needs uh, to make this a dirty fight. And he cannot keep on taking those right kicks because after a while, trust me, it is uh, going to hurt. Absolutely. Completely compromising to see what body shots can do in the last fight with uh, Satan Fast. It's obviously an unstable mate of Tanan Chai. Yeah, Tanan Chai happy to fight off the back foot here in round number one. Oh! oh! Big shots there by Tanan Chai! Yes, yeah, sneaky shots. Good takedown there from Tanan Chai. 25 seconds left on the clock here. It's been a Calm performance by Tanan Chai. Very, very composed. This is the first time that we've seen him on the front foot. Oh, <laughs> look at the, oh, look oh, at that the body. Left, left side here. Yeah. Oh, oh! Right, elbow there by Tanan Chai. I through the guard. And there is a cut. I think that Tanan Chai is telling us that. <laughs> he is a little bit of a tricky mind game there. I'm not sure if there's a cut or not, but surely telling him, hey, I did touch you there. I'm sure he felt it. And oh, oh round yeah, number one. What a performance by that man, Tanan Chai, since something on in full flow here tonight on RWS. Smile on his face. And that's the thing with Tanan Chai, he's usually not very aggressive, but slowly and surely stealing the rounds away from you, scoring those few kicks and two hands here and there. Oh, the big right hand there, though. Right, the right at the very start of the round. That was the end of the round. There was that flying, oh. but we fought knee that turns into a flying elbow. Big part of the round, of course, for those beautifully delivered right kicks by Tanajai to the left side of Marwin's body. Taking a lot of punishment in that round as Marwin is definitely a lot better in round number two. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, in the first round, Orgy Jackson, Torrente, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, the first round, Orgy Jackson, Torrente, you know. Medi not really happy about his fighter's performance, asking him to push forward and to do more, and this is exactly what he needs to do. He needs to make this a dirty fight, and he needs to be outworking Tanenchai. You can't let a passive fighter outwork you. All right, let's see what happens in round number two. Tanachai again, happy to be on the back foot and move that Ooh. right kick to the body. One, Ooh. two combination there from Tanachai. Thought that Marwin Huli might be stunned, but he seems okay. Tanachai swinging. Oh, oh, it's too easy to throw that one, two combination. Connecting twice already with that combo here in round number two. Yeah, Tanachai looking in control right now, Marwin. Looks kind of out of solutions right now, not able to land any, anything significant.
Joseph looking for something. Tanachai pushing forward now. You can see. Oh! oh. Beautiful combination. <laughs> Two jabs, right hand, right elbow from Tanachai. Mm. Really's going to have to work on his defense as well. Because it's far too easy for Tanachai to get through. Oh, you're absolutely right. You see Tanachai controlling the fight using his jab. When it's in the clinch range, obviously an expert at that. I'd like to see Marvin throw more combinations, use his hands a little bit more, and maybe go to the body. Do something oh. different, but here comes the hands of Tananchai. Big hooks there by Tananchai. Wobbling the head of Marvin Huli. Again, looking for that right hook. Oh, oh. sensitive knee. Not connected flush. Yeah, and let me tell you, when you're fighting a fighter like Tanan Chai, with this amount of experience, and you're fighting at this pace, this is the perfect fight for Tanan Chai. For him to feel comfortable, you've got to get him out of his comfort zone. And for that, you need to change the rhythm, which is not what is Marvin doing right now. Good attempt with the hands. Yeah, once again, right hand there from Tanan Chai through the guard. Moving forward. Oh, oh, wow. wow! Big left and right hook. Oh, oh. A second, a third, a fourth, a right hook. And Gary oh. Jones, Marlin Hooley. Sensational by that man right there. Tanachai sits on beat no. What a way to end his year here on RWS. Wow. Wow. What a performance. One more wow, please. It's worthy. Wow, it <laughs> is. Because the whole crowd is probably feeling exactly the same right now. What a performance from Tananchai. And those hands, let me be honest, it was completely unexpected from Tananchai. We usually see him and know him for his kids, his knees and elbows, but those hands. Daniel Rodriguez, if you are watching, and you have to prepare yourself because Tanon Chai sits on Pinong is coming for you in 2024. Let's have a look at how he did it. Two, three, four big uppercuts. Oh. And a right, a left, and another right, maybe. Oh my oh. goodness. Spectacular. Oh, and let me tell you, this is a knockout that will go in the highlights all of frames of RWS. Phenomenal. Let's have a look one more time in super slow-mo. I want to see the start of the uppercut. Knocking Marwin Hooley's back. You can see his defense will start to open up. Oh! That was the first, then the second. Clean. One more uppercut for good measure, and then here comes that swinging right hand. And I feel at this time that Uli was already out. Yeah, it was lights out after that shot. The arms were just around the ropes. Oh, what a performance. Ladies and gentlemen, after 2 minutes and 14 seconds of the second round, we have a winner by round of Knockout Red Corner, the Slim Reaper, the Nantan Sitsong Pino. What a knockout from Tananchai, showing us exactly why he is the RWS 2023 champion and why he is ranked number one, Aaron. Absolutely. Looked like an absolute machine here tonight. And like I said on the commentary, if you're Daniel Rodriguez and you're watching that, I don't think that you're excited about the prospect of fighting Tananchai. But as a fan, 
I very am looking forward <laughs> to watching potentially Daniel Rodriguez defend his title against Tanochai Sitsong Pinong in 2024. Yeah, absolutely. And it just shows how stacked is the 154 pounds division. We've got Shadow who fought earlier, Tanochai, spectacular performance tonight. Of course, Daniel Rodriguez, the current Ratchetman champion. So. 2024. Yeah, Yabucha. 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 There's just so many great uh, fighters in this weight class. So 2024 is looking great. And of course, now moving on to the first title fight of the night. We have Nanaka from Japan, who is the current 112 pounds Ratchetman Stadium. And two times Ratchetman Stadium, as he was also 108 pounds champion. And now moving up to 115 pounds, Aaron. Yeah, absolutely. In the history of Ratchetman Stadium, no foreign fighter has become a three-weight Ratchetman Stadium champion. So Nadaka could make history here tonight. Of course, it is for the interim title, but that history is still up for grabs. And let's not forget, like Antoine said, Nadaka is the 112 pound stadium champion. This has also something else added bonus to it, the fact that they have fought before in 2016, where Chusab defeated Nadaka. So this is revenge tonight. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the fighters from Japan, Nadaka Ewa Sport Gym, and his opponent from Thailand. Please welcome Chusab So Salashi. For the hour of the red corner, fly all the way from Yokohama, Japan, introducing Nanaka Ewa Sports Jam! Can he make history once again here in Ratchetman Stadium, born in Yokohama, Japan. Here comes Nadaka, willing to let go of his 100, 112 pounds Ratchetman belt to get the 115. Can he become the very first non-Thai to be three times, three divisions, Rajaraman champion? This is Nadaka, Ewa Sports Gym. Ladies and gentlemen, fighting over the blue color, representing Thailand. And here comes Chusa with Saw Salaji from Thailand. A man with a small cap here tonight. But high risk, high reward. Can he become 115 pound interim Rajamun Stadium champion? To do so, he just has to defeat Nadaka one again. Like he did in 2016. The big ass. But anything's possible in the sport of Muay Thai. And you can see the tail of the tape for your co-main event of the evening here tonight. And this very special RWS in the red corner, Nadaka Rosh Anari, representing Iwe Sports Gym from Japan, 22 years of age, standing at 165 centimeters, weighing in a championship weight, 115 pounds. He has a reach of 165 centimeters. Born in Yokohama in Japan, he has a professional record of 46 victories with five losses. One of those losses, of course, to Chusap and one draw. The current 112-pound Rajdamun Stadium flyweight champion. 
in the blue corner to Sap, so Salachit from Thailand. He is 24 years of age, also stands at 165 centimeters and weighed in at 115 pounds. He has a reach also of 165 centimeters, and he was born in Maha Sarakam in the northeastern part of Thailand. He has a professional record of 65 fights, 50 victories, and 15 losses. We also want to say that after tonight's main event, what you just witnessed on the screen there, what you just saw, the Thailand visa package that goes with RWS, those three awards. We will find out who the winners are here tonight before the main event. The best international male fighter, best international female fighter, and best rising star of the sport will be announced here tonight. So RWS, the team, they've been looking at how these foreign fighters have been performing here on RWS throughout the year. And those three will be announced. We have got the winners, but we will be announcing the winners just after the main event here tonight. As we can see, Nadekar there going through his Y crew. He's had eight fights in 2023 and he's had eight victories. He is currently 26 and 0 in his last 26 fights. 21 knockouts from those 26 fights, which is absolutely incredible considering the weight category, 112 pounds. He last lost in 2019. He is the 108, uh, sorry, 105 pound Raja Amun Stadium champion in 2019. Uh, sorry, 2018. The Lumpini Stadium at the same weight at 2019. And in 2023, he defeated well, well to, be, to become the 112 pound Rajnamurn Stadium champion. And now at the end of 2023, he's trying to become the interim champion at 115 pounds. Should be noted as well that he also defended his belt here at RWA. RWS against Arun Wittia earlier this year. We've seen two Japanese fighters compete here tonight. We've seen two Japanese fighters be victorious. I've also seen two Japanese fighters deliver some beautiful and interesting. Why Cruz as Nadaka is going sumo style for this one. I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always great to see Japanese fighters here. They really try to entertain with their white right crews. It's great to see. Chusap in 2023. Not a great record. He's had six fights, one victory to his name. Since that loss to Chusap, Nadaka is 42. Two and one from 2016 onwards. All right, with the introductions for your title fight, your first of two is Mr. Beer. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is the interim Ratchet Event Stadium Super Flyweight title match. Fighting in the rules of five rounds, Muay Thai. This is Muay Thai. This is Ratchet Amdan. This part is brought to you by Chemical Fertilizer, War War Kantai, and introducing our referee on stage, Mr. Python Kokla. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, 22 years of age. He stand 165 centimeters tall and weighed in 115 pounds. He or record of 46 win, five losses and one draw. He is former Lumini Stadium minimum weight champion and former Ratchet of the Stadium minimum weight champion and current Ratchet of the Stadium flyweight champion, fighting out of Yokohama, Japan. Let's hear it for Nanaka Eva Sports Gang! 
his opponent fighting about the blue corner, 34 years of age. He stands with an 65 centimeters tall and weighs in with it at 15 pounds. He or record of 50 wins and 15 losses. He is former WMC Muay Thai champion, representing Mahasaraka Province, Thailand. The champion for Shusan So Salah Shay. All right, here we go. Call main event of the evening. It's for the interim Rajdhana Super Flyweight title. Nadaka eager to get things going here against Chusat So Salachi. Chusat actually used to fight in fighting at 118 pounds, and of course Nadaka coming up from 112 pounds. That could play a part in this. Yeah, absolutely. And Nadaka. Running out of opponents in smaller weight classes, so he'll oh, be moving up. The question is, is he big enough for this weight class? Well, we'll get to find out. Right there away. Some fantastic fighters at 115 pounds, mm. of course. The current champion, Prow Prow. Of course, talking about weight, how insane is it to think that ooh, Naraka already winning amateur titles at only 28 kilograms and was still very young back in 2012. Whoa! Big kick from Shusap and big hook from Naraka. Inside kick there by the champ, or 112 pound champion. So what will happen is if he does win this fight, then he will be the interim champion at 115 pounds mm. and he will actually give up the belt at 112 pounds. If he loses, he will still retain that 112 pound title. So, I guess for Nadeka, it's almost like a win win. Yeah, absolutely. Very interesting, though. This fight, Nadeka, you can see how fast and quick he is. The question is, is he going to be powerful enough? We've seen the power he possessed at 112, but 115, you can see how big Shusap is tonight. Yeah, absolutely, and like I said previously, Chusak is usually fighting fighters at 118 pounds as well. He's coming down in weight for this interim title fight. Big opportunity for him. You can see that there's that slight <laughs> size difference between these two fighters. Here's the speed of Nadaka, the combinations, the speed. It's going to be speed versus power. Mm. We'll get the better out of it. Nadaka pushing forward. Shusap, you can see the power in those middle kicks, but Nanaka blocking well. Woo! He has, this is a smart way to fight right now by Chusap. Just be on the back foot. He's looking to counter strike. Can't take too many more of those leg kicks though. Oh. There, and when he gets too close, or when he gets close enough, Ooh. Chusap is then attacking. That time, not able to find Nadaka, who's back, quick on the back foot. Yeah, and I like what Nadaka is doing. Get in and get out fast. Oh, good right hook there, almost to the back of the head. Oh, and look at this, right away, on to uh, Shusap. Oh, big left hand, but a big right kick as well from Shusap. And if you fight too much on the back foot like this, you might lose the round without even knowing, because Nadaka is scoring. Very true. And you can see that Shusap, once he gets back against the ropes, he wants to explode, but Nadakai just won't allow him to connect. Can Ooh. anything have gold? Oh, blood flowing from the nose there. Yeah, big left hands from the Japanese fighter. Very close round. We saw some big, powerful kicks coming from the Thai fighter. But again, the combination, the quickness of Nadaka. I do believe that he won the first one. Of course, that will be a very fight. I will, the I, I will agree with you, I mm. can't see a way how you could give it to Chusab. Chasing oh. shadows a lot of the time when he was pushing forward. Another car was going to be connected with the most significant oh. strikes, including that big right hook right there. And with blood flowing from the nose of Chusab, he'd have to feel that he's going to have to win. Yeah. Four remaining rounds here in this title fight, of course, five rounds. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, in the first round, 14 Jackets, Great start by Nadaka. But just like Antoine says, you want to see more aggression now. 
by Chusak. He cannot continue to fight off the back foot like this because it's just not working. Mm. All right, here we go. Round number two. That's an overcome for Chusak for Nadakar. More of the same. He is considered by many one of the pound for pound best in the sport. Left high kick there by Nadakar. And Chusak still taking his time. That's the thing. You can't rush against somebody like Nadakar because if you make a mistake, he will make you pay for it. Beautiful right kick there. He needs to use his size advantage. He needs to use the power that he possessed. But Nadaka, two quick middle kicks again. Oh, the left hand. Oh! Nice big the... knee there by Chusap. That's much better. Left high kick by Nadaka. So fast. Yeah, he is. Lightning. Fast and aggressive. Just edging forward, but Chusap this time doesn't look, he doesn't want to go backwards. Yeah. He's trying to stand his ground as he eats a body shot that time. This is what a lot of fighters end up doing against Nadikar. They just curl up and yeah. they're just looking to defend themselves instead of attacking. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is that Nadaka oh! makes it hard for those fighters to actually push forward because his footwork is phenomenal and difficult to chase. But now, beautiful hands, Nadaka. The 112 champion chasing the tie fighter. He's enjoying himself in there. Absolutely, as always. Shoots up, looking a little bit too slow. Can't find his distance. Look at the inside leg of Shoots up as well. That left leg is starting to be chewed up. Oh, oh big step in left oh, knee there. Yeah, there was a big elbow as well coming from Shusa, but look at Madaka, so quick, so aggressive, always on his opponent, not wasting any time. Shusa. Oh, good hooks there by Madaka. He just swarms. Yeah, absolutely. He doesn't stop. He's relentless. Every single fight is like this. Yeah, but the thing now is that Shusa needs to adjust. You can't be doing what you've been doing in the previous round if it's not working. The speed of Madaka, not oh. making it easy. Oh. And down he goes and out he is Nadaka, the winner! How about that? Stunning, big, massive left hand all the way from Yokohama, Japan. Knocking down and knocking out Chusak Sosalachi. Nadaka has just made history. The first foreign fighter to become a three-week Rajlamun Stadium champion. Congratulations to him and his team. Spectacular. Fortunately, Chusab still down. Oh, thankfully getting back to his feet. It was a huge left hand there by the Japanese assassin. He takes out another Thai fighter here on RWS. Who can stop? Nadaka is the question. Let's have a look at how he did it. He swarmed Chusab throughout those rounds, looking for that left hand there. And as Chusab went backwards, his guard was open. And Nadaka took full advantage. Big left hand, right to the nose. And Chusab just couldn't take the power. Oh, down he went. Good night. New champ is here. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to introduce the chairman of Russian Men Ranking Committee, Mr. Pry Panyara. And the president of RWS and board director of Russian Men Stadium, Mr. Bang Chinchai Pisit Putinan. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes and nine seconds of the second round, we have a winner by way of knockout. And now, interim Rajnam Stadium Super Flyweight Champion, Rap Corner, Nanaka
Naraka, congratulations. The very first non Thai to become three times Rajanamnan champion. How are you feeling? えっと、え、皆さんこんにちは。エワスポーツチームの試合の中です。え、え、今回えっと、スーパーフライ級のえ、3回目のえ、暫定なんですけど、王者になることができました。え、これもえ、正規チャンピオンになるためのえ、道の
And here is the Ice Queen with the Merry Christmas a song followed by her sister making her way to the ring looking to get the ultimate price of Ratchanamnan Stadium Champion. Can she rise to the occasion? The Ice Queen, Sefki Venom Muay Thai. The two-time RWS Tournament Champion has arrived. Som Ratsavi Manop Jim. She's had 11 fights here at RWS over two years and she has won every single fight undefeated. This will be the crowning glory of what has been an amazing two years for Som Ratsavi. Can she become the first ever Rad Damnon Stadium champion? on RWS. A fitting way to end an incredible year of Muay Thai action with a stadium title fight in our main event. Amazing see Ruben Op, trainer of amazing fighters including Paul Somrat to me, but also including Ten Chai as well. On the other side of the ring, you have got Zevgi Dogen with her sister, Zevgi. There she is, there's the ice queen and her sister standing by her side. Of course, a very, very proud Medi Zatun as well from Venom Muay Thai. There you can see the tail of the tape for this historic battle here in RWS. In the red corner, we have got Som Ratsami Monop Jim from Thailand, just 21 years of age. She stands at 169 centimeters. She weighed in on the money, 118 pounds, and has a reach of 167 centimeters. She was born in Chiang Mai, in the northern part of Thailand. And she has a professional record of 50 fights, 44 victories, 11 of those here on RWS, and just six losses. Two division RWS champion. So last year in 2022, she was the first female champion in the tournament at 112 pounds. So not to be confused with the stadium title, which is completely new here tonight. She's a former IFMA World Muay Thai Championship silver medalist and an IPCC and Muay Thai Junior Cup gold medalist, as well as being a WMO World Champion also. In the blue corner, we have got Zevgi Dogen from Turkey. 21 also, same as Som Ratsami. Stands one centimeter tall at 170 pounds. So also weighing in at 180 pounds. There we can see the stadium rankings. Now, last night, Monica Choklikova defeated Nal Prajan. So I think that she will go up to third or potentially number two. And I think that Monica will actually be the next in line after we discover who the champion will be here tonight. So congratulations to Monica Choklikova who defeated Nal Prajan last night here at Raj Damnon Stadium on the amazing Muay Thai show. Winning the Road to One, sorry, Road to Raj Damnon tournament in Slovakia and then winning the Road to Raj Damnon tournament final here last night against Nal Prajan. So 
Zebgi is 159 centimeters tall. Uh, well, sorry, it has a reach of 159 centimeters. So that's a big advantage there for some Ratsumi, who has an eight centimeter reach advantage over Zebgi. She is from Antalya in Turkey. She has a professional record, Muay Thai and amateur of 153 wins and 21 losses. She currently is ranked number two, as you saw in the rankings, as opposed to Sam Ratsmi, who's ranked number one. A three-time IFMA World Championship gold medalist, a WAKO Kickboxing European Cup gold medalist, five-time amateur boxing World Championship gold medalist. So you talk about a well-round fighter, Zebgi, with boxing skills, with kickboxing skills, and of course, Muay Thai in her arsenal as well. So Som Ratsami, she is the winner of the group stages, defeated Gabriel Moran, then went on to defeat Nao Pradhan, and then Sarah Gohe from America. In the final four, she defeated Kamlai Pet, and then in the final, she rematched Nao Pradhan and got another victory, knocking her down with a beautiful head kick. Zevki, well, she was the winner of Group A with wins over Gamlai Pet, with wins over Paloma and wins over Jitti. She then lost to Naupajan in, the, in a very close semi-final. Current record here on RWS is three and one with the introductions for this historic matchup, Mr. Beer. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is the first Wretched of Stadium female Bantam Red title match fighting in the rules of five rounds Muay Thai. This is Muay Thai. This is Wretched of Men. This bout is brought to you by M. Roy Hasip. And introducing our referee on stage, Mr. Rapin Soblik. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first fighting out of the blue corner, 21 years of age. She's 970 centimeters tall and weighs 118 pounds. She holds a record of 153 wins and 21 losses. She is five-time amateur boxing world championship gold medalist and WAKO kickboxing European Cup gold medalist and three times. Ifma, World Championship Gold Medalist, representing Turkey. Let's hear it for the Ice Queen, Shevki Wiener Muay And opening, fighting. Of the red corner, 21 years of age. She stands 169 centimeters tall and weighing 118 pounds. She holds a record of 44 wins and six losses. She is IPCC Muay Thai and Muay Thai Junior Cup gold medalist and IFMA World Muay Thai Championship silver medalist and two division RWS champions. Representing Chiang Mai Province, Thailand. Let's hear it for Som Rasami Manap Muay Thai Chiang. Of course, it's a stadium title fight. It will be five rounds. And here we go, the first ever Rajdamir Stadium title fight is on the way. Sefki being a southpaw, Somrasami orthodox, but now switched stance. And for the first time in her career, Somrasami will be facing a southpaw. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Of course, on paper, Somrasami with Ooh. the experience as a pro fighter. Oh, oh amazing takedown from Sefki. Starting off very strong. There's a nice left kick as well there by Zevki before she dumped down Som Ratsumi. Ooh! Oh, left hand there from Som Ratsumi. Oh, there's that left hand once again. 
Maybe you're right, Antoine. Maybe the fact that she's fighting against another southpaw is going to throw her off. Yeah, absolutely, but I'm not sure how is the game plan going to go. So Masami awesome. switching stance right now, perhaps to confuse Sefki, but Sefki still very focused. Of course, only two minute rounds. One minute remaining in the first round. They're looking for Sefki. Beautiful combination there. Oh! First earlier this year, we did see Erdem Dinja also from mm. Turkey being crowned Rajdanan Stadium champion. I'm sure in 2024, we'll be looking to regain that crown. In the meantime, it's up to Zevki to try and crown another Turkish champion here. Absolutely, both fighters taking their time, even though I do believe that so far Zevki is a little bit up ahead. Oh, and the left hand again! Smile on the face there of Zevki. Can I get into the oh, Good beautiful. right hook that time by Zevki Dogan. This is a great round here for the Turkish fighter. And again, looking for that left hand. And oh, again, and again! And she fights it flush. So Ratsami looking for knees there within the clinch. Yeah, and Som Ratsami looking good in the clinch as well. Wow. End of the first round. And a round that looked that it went in favor of Sefki. You would feel like that. Yeah, of course, it is open scoring. Even in title fights here at Rajdam Nurse Stadium, no different. For the females, we will get to see how the judges have scored this one, but I have to agree with how you talked about it, Antoine, the fact that Zevki, look at that left hand there, mm. setting the tone straight away, dumping down Tom Ratsami that time. But we start towards the end of the round, though, Tom Ratsami comfortable in the clinch, and we've seen Zevki have an issue working in the clinch before, so this is going to be interesting. Is Tom Ratsami going to adjust the second round? But of course, we'll have to wait for the judges to make it official on who won the first round. A beautiful hook there for Sefki. Ladies and gentlemen, in the first round, the first judge score red nine, blue ten. The second and the third judge score red ten, blue nine. We are around, so let's see. Can she stay focused? Composure is key in the sport. There we go, second round. Also amazing to see some Rasami switching stance for the very first time in her career, fighting as a southpaw. Right kick from Sefki. Attempt of a takedown, no. Nope. Oh, you see some Rasami grabbing a hold of her, taking your advice, Antoine, and looking for those knees that she had success with in round number one. Absolutely, I think the clinch position will be key for Somasami. She does not want to stay on the outside. We've seen the hands of Sevsky. We've seen her footwork as well. Somasami trying to close the distance. As you can see, beautiful combination there from Sevsky. Oh, but look at the clinch position. Beautiful knees there by Somasami. She did eat one or two hooks, but then grabbing a hold and delivering good knees to the body as Som sorry, as Sevsky was trying to back elbow away out of that position. Oh, oh, good a takedown from uh, Sefki. Of course, positioning is very important in Muay Thai and how it scores. Great performance so far from Sefki in the first minute. One more minute in this round, and the takedown for Song Rasami. Crowd wow, really split here, even though we're in the middle of Bangkok. Sefki, a lot of fans behind her in the stadium. Oh. Well, there it is. You can see that Song Rasami, she wants she wants that clinch, she wants those knees. Yeah, absolutely, and Son Rasami looking stronger and, and on top in a clinch position. Sefki perhaps slowing down already a little bit. Looking comfortable on the outside, but a spinning up on that is a, a move that would cost her the round, maybe, with a, with a bad positioning in the end. And the judges won't like that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Taken down after that, trying to defend the clinch. Becoming a little bit scrappy here in round number two. Mm. Zevki trying to fire a left hand once again. Oh. Almost walked into a knee there. Again, she's swinging with those hands, but missing a better round. You don't have to think for some rats to me. Yeah, absolutely. I've got to agree with you on this one. The first, the first round was a close. And it looked like it could have gone in favor of Zevki, but the second round has got to be in the favor of Sombrasami, looking superior in the clinch. 
Well, let's have a look at the highlights from round number two. You can see Zephyr, she was trying desperately to fire off some left hands, and she didn't really connect with a lot, as we said, in that second round. The majority of the strikes were there, that need for the tie fighter as she pressed forward. It was a close round, but like I said, I feel like Sol Ratsky did the better of the two. On judges number two and number three scorecards, anyway, judge number one sees this even, as do I. Mm. I do feel like that Zevki won round number one, but it is what it is. Now Zevki finds herself in a situation where it is a little bit of an uphill battle now. She has to try and win this round. Otherwise, that mountain might be too high, might be too steep. All right, here we go, round number three. Oh, so I'm rats me. You can see she doesn't mind taking maybe one or two punches as long as she can then grab a hold. Yeah, absolutely. She needs and she, she wants to be in a clinch position, and that's the position that Sevsky does not want to be in. Oh, good hands there by Sevsky. She really punches and she's doing what she needs to be doing punch and get out of there before some rats can grab you. Absolutely, of course, she's got kickboxing and boxing skills, but that. Within the clinch, that was for nothing. As you can see, another left knee to the body there by Zom Ratsami. Yeah, absolutely. You can see Zom Ratsami having the advantage in the clinch now. Sevki looking out of her corner. A beautiful one to attempt, missing by a little bit. Good defense from Zom Ratsami. What a corner I saw one of her trainers, Sevki, was telling her to, if she does clinch like that, you've got to go in with an elbow. Mm. Damn, you're right, Aaron. She needs to find a solution to what to do when Soma Sami is actually getting a hold of her. And this is the thing with Soma Sami. It does not look spectacular, but she is uh, slowly but surely getting a hold of you. And she by the position... so good at grinding she out victories is. and finding that pathway. She finds a, with the, weak, the one weakness or a couple of weaknesses in, is in her, her opponent, and she'll just continue along that path. And she's one of the best, male or female, at being able to find those weaknesses. Incredible how she does it. Right now, Sefi out of solution. She just can't get out of the clinch. And the clinching position of Somrasani is way superior to Sefki right now. Deep breaths there by Sefki Dogen. Somrasani slowing down a little bit, perhaps taking a few seconds to rest. Still looking on the top so far, in my personal opinion, in this round. A few seconds remaining. End of the third round. And Sefki that's looking a little bit tired from all the clinch work. Yeah, grueling fight so far. So you can see that on the faces of both these fighters. Let's have a look at the highlights from round number three. Tempted left high kick there from Zevki. Tried to move in, but Song Rasmi is so good with the way that she holds her hands up and just deflects the majority of those strikes. And there you can see within the clinch. Just delivering some beautifully timed knees. There, hands are out straight away, even when she throws the kick. Hands are out looking for that clinch. I'm gonna have to put my neck on the line and say that I think Sam Rapsi might have done enough in that third round. Ladies and gentlemen, in the third round. All three judges, correct him, blue nine. And for the third score, the first shot score, 29 to 28. The second and the third shot score, 30 to 27. She's gonna have to win both these upcoming rounds. And in fact, she might even need a knockdown as well. All right, a tough a challenge there. Fourth oh. round, beautiful one-two from Sefki. And Tomasami, perhaps she was 
resting a little bit towards the end of the previous round as she is pushing forward now. And in my opinion, the perfect game plan. You do not want to let a puncher move forward. No kick there by Zebke, trying something new. Oh. Yeah, looking for that left hand, almost finding it that time, but again, deflecting off the arms of Son Ratsumi. Definitely both fighters looking a little bit fatigued right now. Yeah, absolutely, and you can understand all this clinch work is definitely making you tired, using a lot of energy in there. Whoa. Good left knee there yeah. by Son Rasmi. Two good right knees by Zebki. One minute remaining. Zebki looking like she's holding a little bit, perhaps resting a bit. Fighting on the back foot might not be the solution. She needs to push forward. Oh. Beautiful one two there. She needs to find openings. Attempted left high kick by Som Ratsumi. Well, of course, she used that technique to knock down Nao Pajan. Ooh! Oh, better left hand there by Zevki. Trying to use those teeps to keep Som Ratsumi away from this, from that clinch. Yeah, but as soon as they get in the clinch, Som Ratsumi just looking superior in her positioning. Both fighters having uh, equipment malfunctions. Yeah. And Somrasami, phenomenal fight as a southpaw, switching stands for the oh. first time. Oh, beautiful left hand there from Sevki. Another big left hand. And right kick to the body by Sevki. Is Somrasami standing tight? Oh, sick. Got some issues with that advertising. Yeah. Crowd cheering, it wasn't a knockdown. <laughs> End of round number four. Close round, that one, not an easy one to score. See if there's an argument for both those fighters to win the round. Let's have a look at the highlights. A couple of slips there by Zemke, but she recovered and delivered some good hooks to the face of Son Ratsumi. Oh, what a big left hand there by Zemke. That might have been the shot of the round. I think it's a case that she did win it. Did. Throw some good knees and connect with some good knees, but overall, I do believe personally that Zebki did enough. Let's find out if I'm right. Ladies and gentlemen, in the fourth round, all three judges score red 10, blue 9. For the total score, the first judge scored 39, blue 37. The second and third judge scored 40, 236. Done already. He's going to be grabbing the hold, this time running down that clock. All right, here we go. The fifth and final round. We'll also get a word with our champion from Antoine in the ring after this fight. A Zebki there swinging. Good left kick to the body there by Son Ratsumi. Deep there by Zevki to the chest, the upper chest of Son Ratsumi. Good left kick to the body there by Zevki. Swing and a miss there by Zevki. Tempted right hand. T really troubling Som Ratsumi. Oh, another slip there. Need to get a towel and clean that ring. You can see the sweat marks. Left kick to the body there by Som Ratsumi. Good knees again, swinging left and right hands by Zevki. Remember, if you just joined us, she needs to knock out Son Ratsumi. To take away that Rajalandon Stadium belt, winning the round and even a knockdown will not be enough at this point. Low kick. Another low kick, but this time by Son Ratsumi. 
again, going back to that standing leg left that we saw in Ratsum, we haven't really seen a lot of low kicks by the... Oh, good elbow strike there by Zebby, a back elbow. Oh, a takedown where so Ratsumi goes head first. And there it is, the end of the fifth and final round. Sam Ratsumi will be declared the first ever female champion here at Rajadam Nern Stadium. History has been made. And let's not forget we will get a word with our champion, Antoine, in the ring, ready for that. Let's have a look at the highlights from round number five. Low kicks by Sam Ratsumi in that round. See definitely Zebke trying to fire off some left and right hands, but it just wasn't to be here tonight. So Ratsumi is going to extend her record here on RWS to 12 and 0. Two time RWS tournament champion. And now she's going to become the first ever Rajdanern Stadium champion, the first female ever. Congratulations to her. Let's get the official announcement by Mr. Beer. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to introduce the chairman of Russia the Ranking Committee, Mr. Pride Panyalak, and the president of RW West and board director of Russia the Stadium, Mr. Bang Chi and Chai Visit Wutina. And now, ladies and gentlemen, of the five rounds of Muay Thai action, we go to the judge scorecard. The first jazz card is about 49 to 46. The second jazz card 50 to 45. And the last jazz card 50 to 45. Declaring your winner by way of unanimous decision. And the first Russian Stadium female back of her champion. Red Corner. So blessed Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Somrasami, two weight classes, RWS champion, and now the very first Rajanaman female fighter in history to become the champion. How are you feeling right now? Ben Cham, RWS, Songrun, Latani, Prawasa, Kangmai, Ben Cham, Rajanaman, Kangrek, Rusiking, I bank up. เหมือนปีที่แล้วก็ชิงเส้นแรกเอ่อ <laughs> แล้วก็อาจารย์นรงฟักตั้งค่ะเพราะว่าแล้วก็ทุกคนในค่ายที่ช่วยซ้อมช่วยป้อมหนูไม่งั้นหนูคงไม่มาไกลถึงทุกว
ตัวหนูอะยังไม่เก่งยังไม่เก่งพอค่ะตัวหนูหนูต้องพัฒนาอีกเยอะค่ะทางด้านกําลังแล้วก็ฝีมือหนูอะค่ะถึงแบบหนูก็แบบมีแต่คนดูถูกหนูนะคะว่าแบบหนูคงไม่มาไกลถึงขนาดนี้อย่างนี้ค่ะแต่ว่าด้วยแรงผัดดันหนูแล้วก็ทุกอย่างอย่างเงี้ยหนูก็เลยพาตัวเองมาถึงทุกวันนี้ค่ะ I want to still improve myself. I don't believe that I am the best version of me yet, and I will keep on improving. Thank you all for the support, and thank you all for the people who are adopting me. Well, I am looking forward to seeing you here again, ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise for your winner, Somrasami Monop J. We have been waiting for a few months already on who will get the award of the Privilege Card, and tonight we will get to know who will become the best international rising star, the best international female fighter, and the best international male fighter, and get the award of the Thailand Privilege Card, offering a five years membership package under the theme of Friends of Muay Thai. Friends of Thailand to, th to foreign Thai boxers, each valued at a whooping of 900,000 baht. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to introduce the president of Thailand Privilege Card Comedy Limited, Mr. Manate Anawad. All right, and now we will get to find out who is the best international rising star. Ladies and gentlemen, for the best international rising star award goes to Adam Taha Denson. Erdem Dinser, former 147 pounds Rajanam champion, making his debut in RWS this year and has shown us why he deserves to be the best international rising star to get the award of Thailand Privilege Card. Congratulations to Erdem Dinser. Right, and now uh, moving on, we will get to find out who will become the best international female fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, the best international female fighter awards goes to Shevki Doka. Sefki, who just fought and made history just now. Not coming up right now. Her sister, Sarah Dokan, getting the reward for her. The best international female fighter. Congratulations with a great and bright future up ahead. And now we'll get to find out who is the best international male Fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, the best international male fighter awards goes to Daniel Rodriguez. Hi, everybody. I would like to thank Thai Privilege and RWS for awarding me the award of the best male international fighter of the year. I'm so sorry I couldn't be here today in person to accept my award. I'm currently in Switzerland undergoing a surgery and we'll be back soon. Jovica, stop running away. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. See you soon. Daniel Rodriguez, who could not make it tonight, still in Switzerland, recovering from surgery. One of the best 
international fighter here in RWS. We left a last word for Yad Bisha, stop running away. And of course, Daniel, still the current 154 Ratchet and Men champion. All right, now we'll get to do a group shot with all the fighters. Congratulations once again for the best international rising star, the best international female fighter, and the best international male fighter. All right, and of course, we do have one more fight tonight. One of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, Lamna Bunlek, will be here right after a short break at RWS. What an incredible night it has been tonight, Aaron. And what a way to end it with Lamna Moonlik as the last fight of the evening. Yeah, absolutely. One of the pound for pound greats who, of course, was a two-time tournament champion here on RWS. I can't think of a more or a better fighter to end an amazing year here at RWS than witnessing Lam Nam Moonleg. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the fighters from Thailand. Lam Nam Moonleg, oh, actually, yeah. And his opponent from Myanmar, please welcome Sa Eshi Sa Jit Long Shot. Ordering from Myanmar, the biggest underdog of the night for sure, but still took the fight, believing he can be the man to defeat the mountain that is Lamnamule. This is Saw Eshi, Saw Chiknong Cha. And for the final time this year, my pleasure to introduce the final fighter of this week's RWS. And they don't get much better than this one, Lamna Moonleg or Achiria, a two-time 135-pound tournament champion here on RWS. Ends the night. There you can see 2022 and 2023 undefeated here in RWS. Lam Nam Moonlet is back to see us out. They can see the tail of the tape for the final fight of the evening here on RWS. 138 pounds. Lamna Mulek or Acheria from Thailand in the red corner. He's 26 years of age. Stands at 168 centimeters. He weighed in at 137.6 pounds and has a reach of 170 centimeters. He was born in Buriram, in the northeastern part of Thailand. He has a professional record of 100 victories, 28 losses, and two draws from 130 fights. Currently ranked number one at 135 pounds. Lightweight, two-time RWS lightweight champion, 2021 fighter of the year, and also a former WMC world champion. 
think I'm right in saying he was also awarded just recently the Rajnanda Stadium Fighter of the Year as well. In the blue corner from Myanmar, saw a Shi, 23 years of age, stands at 167 centimeters, so two centimeters shorter than Lamna Mulek. He weighed in at 135.5 pounds and has a reach of 164 centimeters, so a six centimeter reach advantage for Lam Nam Moon Lek. He has a professional record of 45 fights, 35 victories with 10 losses. Myanmar Muay Thai champion. He's experienced in three round fights, making his debut here tonight. So Lam Nam Moon Lek currently 10 and 0 in RWS and in his last 10 fights he's won nine just losing one in the in group B of the tournament which of course he ended up winning that tournament he defeated Dia he then went on to defeat Samin Dead and then Renta Buakau in the final four, and then again he defeated Sami Det to claim that title. One, like I said, along with Nadaka, one of the best pound for pound, top 10, without a doubt, fighters in the world. For the last time this year, with the introductions, Mr. Beer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last bout of RWS Rajaradan Bio Series 2023. This is Muay Thai. This is Rajaradan. Introducing our referee on stage, Mr. Chanin Tip Supan. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first. Fighting out of the blue corner, 23 years of age. He's down 167 centimeters tall and weighing 135.5 pounds. He or record of 35 wins and 10 losses. He is Myanmar Muay Thai champion representing Myanmar. Let's hear it for So A C So Jin Sanong Cha. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, 25 years of age. He stands 167 centimeters tall and weighing 137.8 pounds. He has pounds. He, oh, a record of 100 wins, 28 losses, and two draw. He is former WMC World Champion and 2021 Fighter of the Year and two times RWS Lightweight World Champion. Representing Uriram Province, Thailand. Let's hear it for Lamna Moonlight or Acharya. And for the final time of 2023, I say, here we go. Schedule first round of a schedule three rounds here. In the final bout of 2023, Thailand versus Myanmar. Lamna Moonlek with a left high kick there to start the fight against Saw. And again, looking for that left high kick. Ooh. Right hook there by Lamna Moonlek. Of course, the champion at lightweight here at Rajnamo Stadium is John Paranchai. Another left kick there from Lamna Moonlek, three in a row. I'm not like with a new tattoo on his oh. back. <laughs> Good spot, I didn't even see that. Yeah, beautiful tiger on his back. I believe he is not finished yet. As in that after the fight. Oh, and a left kick again. Fighting like a tiger right now. Trying to pounce at this fighter from Myanmar. Left kick to the Ooh. midsection. Powerful kick from Soishido. Of course, Lam Lam Lek, the big favorite out of the two. It's interesting because I'm pretty sure, 
I might be mistaken to say this is his first tattoo. Yeah. Oh, what a right uppercut! And he's just gone all out. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's that, it's more. Hold oh. back. Oh, beautiful low kick there from Lamna Moonlet. Hurting sore in the process. Ooh. That's close. Oh, oh the left elbow. Sneaky through the guard there by Lamna Moonlet. Again, going back to the legs that time. Back up high, connecting to the arms of the man from Myanmar. Yeah, and a little bit off the record, but as we have announced before, we will be going to Japan. RWS will be going to Japan, and I believe Lamna Moonlek will be part of the Thai team to go there. Oh, Attempted oh, right oh. hook to the body there by the Thai. Inside kick. Sorry, she desperately trying to find a solution right now. Got to go through those big oh. left shots and left kick. See, Lamna Moonlight in the mood to finish this one early, you feel. Those high kicks at the start of the round. Ooh. Jumping elbow! Oh, and a big right time. elbow as well. Massive right elbow by Lamna Moonlight. Looking to finish RWS 2023 with a knockout win. Oh! oh. Uh oh. That looked, looked like it hurt his leg. Yeah, that kick was pain for sure. Manda Moonlet though, taking his time. Master of patience. Oh, and again, oh. back to that leg. <laughs> Jimmy <Jamie> Froggy. <laughs> End of round number one. Solid ground, you would think, for Lam Nam Moonlek or Cherry A. Fighter who's right on the top of his game, who has been on the top of his game now for two years here on RWS. Let's see the highlights from round number one. Well, started off with those left high kicks. Beautiful right up there through the guard. Man, that jumping downward elbow, following up with a right. He is a master of the RWS canvas. He really is an artist. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the first round, all three judges score red 10, blue 9. It's a knockout or it's a draw? All right, here we go, round number two. Lamna Moonlek moving forward. I'm sure he must be targeting that back leg. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting to see what is the game plan going to be for there Saw Ishii. Ooh, big swing there by Saw. Yeah, and perhaps this is what he needs right now. Make this fight dirty. Oh, going to the leg that time, or Saw. Inside kick there. It's the lead left leg that time. Swing and a miss by Lamna Moonlek. Left low kick. Lamna Moonlek taking his time to find his target. Oh, 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 oh. Dangerous by Saw. Thought it was moving out of range, but Lamna Moonlek was able to find him. Oh. Saw taking risks, so why not? Yeah, absolutely. He needs a two if he wants to have a chance of beating the almost unbeatable Lamna Moonlek. Probably the fighter that is giving the most trouble to the matchmakers of RWS because nobody wants to fight this man. Yeah, very true. For weeks we've been looking for an opponent for Lamna Moonlek. No exaggeration in what Antoine says. And he's really struggling to find someone to compete against him. Oh. That time to the back leg, Ooh. left, sorry, right hook, left straight, right body shot there by Lamna Moonlek. 90 seconds left on the clock, left oh. high kick, once again. Big overhand windmill strike there by Saws. Lamna Moonlek rushes in with a left elbow, backing up the fighter from Myanmar on the ropes, looking for a spinning back elbow. Not to count out, of course, Saw Ishii, but Lamna Moonlek. Making his fight. Oh, question mark kick. 
looking like a sparring partner. Another windmill there from oh. Saw. And almost walks into an elbow strike. Yeah, but you gotta give credit to Saw Ishii, of yes. course, trying different things and actually trying to land a few punches. Oh, oh, but the big low kick on the back leg. Yes, and Lama Mulek was looking for that big low kick to that back leg. Oh, almost with the left eye. And uh, as he was going to the leg now, right away aiming for the head. So is she. 30 seconds left on the clock. Attempted right high kick by Saw. Another left high kick there by Saw. Not finding the mark. Final 20 seconds of the round. Ooh. Big right hook to the body there by Lamna Moonlek. Again, Lamna Moonlek. Good combination. Yeah, and Saw she does not want to give up yet, even though he did eat a few big uh, shots. Wow. Well, Saw she mix it out of round number two and will go to the final round here this evening. And this and year. of the year. Yeah of RWF. Let's have a look at the highlights of round number two. Oh, well, there's pretty much the story of the fight. Lamna Moonlet pushing the pace, the one who is bringing the action, pushing forward, trying to find the big shots. Potentially trying to even stop Saw, but unable to do so. But of course, Stay with confidence that he did win that round. Second round, all three judges score red 10, blue 9. And for the total score, all three judges score red 20, blue 18. Well, oh, absolutely. As Nongdir, the ring girl, walks for the last time of the year. I think one of the fights that I witnessed was Lamna Moonlet taking on Samingdet in the final oh, of, yeah. the the, of the yearly tournament, which went back and forth. Eventually, Lamna Moonlet won three rounds to two. That was a tremendous fight, which many did think was going to play out like that. Of yeah, course, Lamna Moonlet always the favourite. Dom Tong versus Peckman as well. Ooh. A few weeks back for the stadium title, a draw. Mm. That was a spectacular fight. We hope we do a rematch of that in 2024. Yeah, we had Kapra as well. Wow. Looking at... That was I'm, an amazing yeah, fight. Yeah, that was another it amazing was. fight. There's just so many. Of course, Daniel Yodvisha has been... It's Absolute, happened two yeah. or three times. It was amazing every Vic, single time. Tanon Chai versus Pet Morricot in the same tournament yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, right. There's so many. I think I think a few days ago they did say that uh, Prao Prao versus Din Nuotong mm. was actually the, the stadium fight of the year. Yeah, it was, so, I think. So I do believe that we'll get to see this again next week on the highlights, hopefully. If not, of course, you can always go on our WS social media. Oh! Uh, look at London Moonlek, Showboat. That'd Showing, be fun in there. Yeah, every single skills in the book. Another left high kick there from Lamna Moonlek. Oh, flying knee to the face there by one of the pound for pound best on the planet. Oh, good right high kick there from Saw. Lamna Moonlek more loose now. Looks like he's happy to take the decision victory. He's just toying with Saw, is she? Been great to be a part of RWS 2023 on a personal note as well. Oh, how about that? What a combination by Lamna Moonlek. Of course, we want to thank all the viewers watching around the world on the zone for joining us each and every week. And of course, all the people that flood here to Rajdam Nur Stadium every Saturday night. It has been packed week after week. We can't thank you enough. Yeah, absolutely. And of course. 2024, the RWS tournament will be back, perhaps with a lot of surprises for you guys watching at home, so stay tuned. Of course, one big last shout out to all the fighters who put their life, of course, on the line every time they step inside that beautiful, prestigious Rajnamna Stadium ring for our entertainment. Ooh. Left eye kick there by Lamna Moonlik. 
I mean, uh, if he wanted to move in, I think he could, but he's gonna show a little bit of compassion there to Saw. Of course, yeah, let's is. not forget Saw. He did take the fight on short notice, of course. Yeah, absolutely. And the reason why he did take it on short notice is because nobody, like I said, wants a two fights at Lavna Moonleg. Incredible performance again from the champ. Great display of Muay Thai by Lamna Moonleg, the star boy of RWS. Let's have a look at the highlights for the final time this year. There was that downward jumping elbow in round at number one. Spinning back kick by Lamna Moonleg. There's that flying knee attempted to crush the guy there, taking you off your feet, and then a spinning back combination. How about that by Lamna Moonleg? Then moving around, going through the back, delivering a left high kick. Is there anyone better than Lamna Moonleg? Arguably the pound for pound great in the sport of Muay Thai. What a year he has had, and what a year it has been for RWS. Ladies and gentlemen, of the three rounds of Muay Thai action, we go to the judges' scorecard. All three judges, score is about 30 to 27. Declaring your winner by way of your divorce, this is Sean Red Corner. What an incredible way to end the year with an incredible performance from Lambda Moonlight, Aaron. Absolutely incredible. Like you said, it just we can't find fighters to compete against Lambda Moonlight, and it's completely understandable. He is very, very special indeed. I, who, I do hope that next year we're able to put him against Tom Paranchai because I feel like he deserves to have a shot at the Rajnabur Stadium title. You're absolutely right, and I cannot wait for next year. Of course, this will be the last event of the year because next week we'll get to see a highlight, like we said on commentary, of some of the best fights of 2023. So this is very interesting to what's going to happen next week. And of course, we return to full action on the 6th of January from the new time of 9.15 p.m. Thai time onwards each and every week here at Rajadam Nern Stadium here, here on RWS. Of course, always a pleasure to be here in Rajadam Nern Stadium. It's been an honor to be commentating all these amazing fights alongside with you, Aaron. And ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned, stay ready, because RWS Rajadam Nern World Series 2024 will be here very, very soon with some amazing fights, because this is Muay Thai, and this is Roger Lambeau. Merry Christmas!